All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the Wrath and Glory game, The Depths of Trollius. If you're unfamiliar, we're playing, of course, the Wrath and Glory system made by Cubicle 7, formerly uh, made by Ulysses Spiel. Uh, you don't really have to have watched the previous VODs to enjoy this one, but uh, I would recommend checking out the VODs all the same. You can find them on my YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. Um, I don't really have much in the way of announcements this week, so let's just go around and have everyone introduce themselves, and then we'll jump into play. So let's start with uh, Brother Harad. Hello, everyone. Uh, I play Brother Harad. Uh, my name is George. Uh, you can find me on Twitter uh, at Strom12341 or YouTube on at Strom, please. Cool. Uh, I'm Eric. Um, I'm playing Sister Rosencrantz, a sister of battle. And uh, you can find me everywhere at Eric Bulgaris. I'm Ben. I'm playing a Imperial Guardsman medic who, well, I'm currently playing. I'm expecting to die fairly soon because that's just what usually happens to me. It's in the primer. Mm -hmm. <sighs> it is. William, I'm playing the I'm playing Jakta, the Hive Ganger Scum. And I'm Kessa. I'm playing Agent Shank. Very good. And something I've uh, had my players do is uh, do a little bit of an opening log, a little bit of catch up to get everybody acquainted with where you are. So I believe Brother Harad has that this week. Report to Chapter Master Nakir regarding the Veronius deployment to be transmitted with the appropriate encryption codes once communication with elements in orbit is reacquired. We have been on this frozen world for only hours and already have uncovered a vile conspiracy. Traitor Astartes of the Thousand Suns have worked their dark magics on this world and have pulled it from elsewhere to here. Possibly no more than a company, but more likely a squad, is spread throughout the planet enacting horrific rituals. The mortals with me have acquitted themselves in combat against one of the Thousand Suns and have earned my respect. We still have a psychic disturbance to investigate, as well as a rogue Magos of the Martian cult. We are still attempting to reach the epicenter of a heretical power at the heart of this hive, despite the dangers. Bring death to our enemies, brother. Harad out. Very nice, and you may have uh, one point of glory for that lovely introduction. So, uh, if you guys did want to check out the Spire, uh, we can certainly jump in there. Um, you know, let's actually just go there, because I figure there's a little bit of RP opportunity for Jacta to... Uh, catch up with the rest of the squad so uh hopefully the map loads there it goes so again uh you all have just dispatched the uh thousand suns marine you have returned to the entrance of the spire where the ranger and jacta are waiting for you so she's over here so jacta uh to give you a little bit of context um, you heard pretty much the sound of a bolt gun. You heard the sound of uh, lots of shouting, chainsword revving. Uh, then it went silent for a little bit. And the next thing you know, your squad has reappeared, looking maybe a little bit worse for wear. Brother Harad may have uh, lots of blood on him. Uh, Jacta is drinking his bottle of moonshine. <clears throat> Sister Krantz walking back pretty uh, defiantly and proud. Private well, uh, Volkard, uh, I hand you the Vox unit on my back and say, would you be able to repair this with the uh, spare parts or the parts in this facility? Uh, I can definitely give it an attempt. One moment here. Um, so am I just going to roll a tech for that or do I need to try to scavenge parts first? Um, I would say you probably have time to have scavenged. I mean, I, I don't see a value in gating that behind you. Really what this is, is time is the factor here. So if you want to take the time here in the spire to do it, you certainly can. Um, but what I would say is that based on how quickly you want to get done with it is what the difficulty of the task will be. So for example, and again, these times aren't set in stone. If you want to get it done in like an hour, that's going to be a higher difficulty than taking like half a day to fix it. Right. 
So I'm going to try to, well, I'm going to roll to try to fix it. And then any um, icon, any sixes that I get, I'm going to push for speed. Okay. Unless you tell me that I can't push anymore. Sounds reasonable to me. So I'm not going to be able to push anything because there's not going to be any sixes. Wow. <laughs> wow. So uh, I would say you can push one of those. All right. So I push one. All right. So uh, as all of you sort of uh, take a breather, uh, we'll say that uh, Torvian, you basically clear a working area in the entrance way of the Mechanicus Spire and unceremoniously begin pulling open panels, uh, unconnecting wires, putting in new wiring, maybe even changing out a few circuit boards, basically doing all the things that a Mechanicus cult member would yell at you for violating the machine spirit for. But uh, you actually work with surprising speed and accuracy to the point that maybe all of 30 minutes has passed and you now have a working box. Hey guys, I fixed it. Oh, do we know that it's working? Like, are we picking up a radio station or chatter? Uh, it's working. We're getting the top 50. Yeah. I'll flip it on. <laughs> do we hear anything? Yeah, so you Brian, flip it on. Brand, You're listening Brand to K-O-R-N radio. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Nothing but hits. K-H-O-R-N-E. <laughs> Each oh. one of these is a slayer. Oh god. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're fine. Uh, so you flick it on, and yes, actually, you get a little bit of static at, for, at first, but as you sort of tool through the frequencies, um, you do actually get uh, a mid-broadcast, like someone speaking, you know, halfway through. And it's it's a female voice, and it sounds very worried. And they say, anyone surviving, we have holed up in Hadblock, and then there's a little bit of static. Please Private, come. raise the volume. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you turn it up a little bit more, <laughs> and uh, the voice now louder says, please, I have wounded and civilians here. Whoever is out there, whoever hears this, please, we need immediate assist. And it stays static from there. Can you can you get them uh, on two way, so that we have their position? I'm assuming there's a hand unit, correct? There is. All right, so I'm gonna fiddle with the dial a bit more, see if I can bring it back into focus, just in case it was a, a repeat message instead a auto beacon instead of a actual communication, mm -hmm. and try calling them. All right, what do you say? This is Special Forces from Veronius. We are here trying to fix what is wrong. Over. There's about 30 seconds of static as you start to think maybe they didn't get through. You know, maybe something went wrong on your end. But then the voice, uh, much more upbeat and almost relieved, says, Hello, hello, um... Can you can you hear me? I hear you. Who My God! To? Praise praise the Emperor. Um, I, can you come help us? We're we're being beset by the frozen. I'm more than happy to. Um, need to know who I'm talking to and where I can find you. Uh, my name is. You you can find us at at Hadblock Tango Three. Do you know where that is? I do not. We are currently at the. Hey, what was the day? Well, looking what around for here yeah. we have the name for so you look around and you see over the entranceway to the spire uh it is omicron 7 is the name of the spire we're or sorry omicron, omicron 9. 7 we're, sorry we're at omicron 9 one of the mechanicus spires which direction are you and about how far from here uh we are approximately k kilometers to your north and k to your east and uh, that. Ooh, well, that's good. Yeah. So I'm actually a, gonna put you here. I had half a mind that when you said that we're at the Mechanicus spot, they're like, ah, oh, you know what? On second thought, we're good. Have fun. <laughs> 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 oh, actually, I had it back. I had it mixed up. So it's south and east, not north and Copy. east. Copy. That's um. Well, the... it seems like the area of the dead zone. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. 
Well, we are going that way. Tell them we'll be on our way. We'll be there as quick as we can. We'll bring all of the fury we can muster. The wrath of the Emperor is about to fall on them. I have an important question. Do you actually cock a bolt gun into the Vox unit for effect? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm not actually in front of the Vox unit, but I do cock my bolt gun uh, dramatically. Right. Fair enough. All right, but the, the that, woman says, "Oh, ammo again, is precious." Emperor praise, Emperor be praised. We look forward to, and then there's a scream that's not the same female voice. And says, "Damn it, they must have gotten through. Just, just get here as soon as you." All right, let's move out. All right. All right. Harad will uh, take up the burden of the box unit again. Yeah. All right. So you step out of the Mechanicus Spire into the broken, frozen streets of the Hive. Get a lot of mileage out of this image. I love it. And uh, what happens is when you initially step forward into the Spire... Um, You all were sort of not quite in the middle of a blizzard, but it was pretty close. Now something has changed about the weather. Instead of snow, you know, white particulate falling from the sky, what you're seeing instead is that same sort of black diffuse material that was coming from the highest spire of this hive. And it's, it's sort kinda, of mixing with the snow, like you would find like black and white sand, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I was gonna say it's kind of it's almost like a little bit ashy, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, okay. We may be running out of time. We want to see if we can find transport. We are, you know, at a at an admec. I believe our best course of action would be to uh, find these locals save as many as we can and have them give us the quickest route to the central spire. So do we want to walk there or do we want to see if there's transport available? Ranger Alara actually kind of just holds up a hand. What? I mean, you know, I've learned not to butt in. You seem to get very annoyed when I do that, but, um, Isn't that a vehicle we could use? And you all look at where she's pointing, and what you see is um, almost like sort of what we see on the screen here behind her, sort of that walker, almost like a bus shell with four legs that could walk on. Um, It actually looks to be in rather good condition. Um, But one of the key missing features is around about halfway, you know, along the bus, the underside has been ripped out from underneath of it. So it's exposed to the elements, but it's a potential vehicle. Um, I vote we take the vehicle. No, we're already exposed anyway. Swift movement is more important. Right. Um, I mean, I, I figure, I figure uh, Sister Kranz would know which one would be faster. Um, so yeah, we would go with the fastest route. Okay. Speed is key in this situation. Uh... This is the first time we have actual imperium we can help like looking back at the mechanicus mm-hmm. uh Kranz, why don't you roll me because i'm trying to think what this would be because my intention behind this role is for you to judge which is the faster um so um, maybe a scholar or survival yeah like i could see scholar um no i think survival right because you're like trying to get from one spot to another based on well, and, and like do we have actual tracking. distance because uh, the, yeah. the actual distance communication that we received was garbled. We well, didn't. Um, are they I actually? thought that was just ELH cleverly not giving us the actual numbers. <laughs> just a little bit of that. Just a little bit of yeah. that. We also have a map. Um, yeah, I'll, say, I'll put us back on this representative map real quick. Has yeah, map. right. So yeah, uh, let's cool. see. If I break Survival. out the ruler, would a DN three? I I, a I, I got none. I got none to push. So yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, right. so it looks like me- measurement wise, you're only about a click away, which is good. All right. So let me put you back here. Uh, so yes, uh, Kronz, you're looking at this walker and you're doing the math in your head about traversing an environment like this in, you know, on foot. And it's actually about 50, 50. 
there's merit to spending time on possibly repairing the walker and getting it up and running, but there's also merit in simply trudging through the snow and, well, now ash uh, to get where you're going. Uh, however, what I would say is, I'll even spend a point of ruin to do this, is you look back at the spire behind you, and coming out of the spire, sort of unprompted, is the 40k equivalent of a golf cart. Just rolling out to beat you. Mm, definitely cart. hard no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um... Okay. Uh, do was there any part of the Vox call uh, that mentioned the number of survivors? No. Um, okay, cool. So then, then for for uh, posterity's sake and stuff, then I think Sister Krantz would probably go. Uh, I don't know how many survivors we can fit in this with all of us in it. It'd be probably better off to go on foot. Otherwise, we have to leave people behind, and that's not something I'm ready to do. Especially you said so, more. you want us to. Not only rescue these people from the frozen that they're surrounded by, but drag them with us for the rest of the mission that we're here for. Does Brother Harad know if it's working in in operable condition? Does uh, what is your tech like? That's a good question. Uh, it's a pool of three. What is your pilot like? That's a pool of four. Roll your pilot for me. I get that point of ruin right back. Um, I thought I was the tech guy. Um, yeah, Rod, think... this is not an Astartes pattern walker. This is not <laughs> something the Codex describes. You have no idea. Um, Bro I think brother, I... let me go ahead and take a look at it. Oh, I wanted to rebut one. you. I wanted to rebut you real quick, being like, you know, well, are we really going to drag these people around? And I wanted to say, um, listen, private. Maybe I will be the only one who cares about the immortal souls of our fellow brothers and sisters. But, you know, the, their their souls are on the line here, and we will be protecting them. I'm not saying that we should not rescue them from the situation they're in right now. All I'm saying is that it sounds like it's a bunch of civilians, and we're going into more combat. Might I remind you, Sister Kronz, that... Up until this point, everything on this planet has been hostile. I do not right. treat the civilians as a positive force. Remember, there are only degrees of guilt. They're the first people we've met that have a chance of being Imperium, like looking right, at Ranger would you be Alara. Able to go and check to see if that is operational. <laughs> if it requires any maintenance, then it would be more expedient to travel on foot. I'm I'll going on foot. Look at it. Take, so take the walker if you need to. Um, While you guys are I'd be, I'm I'd gonna... be willing to split the party if, if you wanted to, but no, 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 I, don't... I think this is interesting. I'm going to go to take a look. I'm not it's, if it need, if it needs any work, we're going to walk. I'm just hopping right. in to see if I can, right. you know, turn a key and get it to start. Uh, yeah, I don't trust that. I don't trust that. I I am refusing to acknowledge its existence. <laughs> so with so five tech card. successes, uh, what you end up learning is that. It basically needs to be defrosted. The engine compartment needs to be defrosted. Um, but conceivably, it would work. Now, where you're going to get the heat to defrost the engine, that I leave up to you to figure out. Who has the flamethrower? I don't think we have a flamethrower, uh, but we have a plasma gun, don't we? Yeah. We have a plasma pistol. Plasma pistol. Um, you can fire it off a couple of times, and then we can stick that in there. What into the engine? <laughs> I thought you were just going to say <laughs> shoot, shoot the, engine. the engine, but shoot the the weapon into the sky, Wait. so that the weapon itself is heated, oh. and then anyway. toss it in there. Hang Speaking on, that's of... actually a really good question. Go ahead, Kessa. Speak of uh, shooting things, I'm going to take a look at like golf carts that's just emerged from the uh, factorium. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to know that. We didn't and have any. I need to ask you there. all this real quick. Um. Uh, KSR, you didn't give me the flamer, right? No, I didn't. Uh, right. okay. I had a choice between I didn't... heavy flamer and uh, plasma pistol. I asked. Right. right, 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 right. I just wanted to confirm. I didn't add it to my sheet, but I remembered it was. And sorry. Okay, we're good. No, you're good. Okay. So, uh, Corporal Shank, you go over to the golf cart. And to describe it a little bit more, it's, you know, a four-wheeled vehicle, very uh, diminutive compared to the walker you're pointing at that has been pointed out to you. Um, can seat about two people, but it has sort of a little area in the back that you maybe could 
uh, sit a few people on, or maybe someone could stand and then sort of post up with a gun on the roof of the vehicle. Um, but what strikes you as the most odd about this golf cart, again, I'm saying golf cart because I don't really know the 40k equivalent thereof, um, but what strikes you as odd is that the engine compartment does not look like it is standard. And why you can make that dis distinction is because literally the hood has been removed and there is a gleaming metal structure that you assume is some sort of souped up engine where a normal engine would be. Hmm. It probably and came out on its own to me. You just get golf cart, Knight Rider. <laughs> or the Green Mile Gangers. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I smell heresy. <laughs> I was gonna since look. we landed yes <laughs> Torbian actually guessed it because when you say that Shank the golf cart speaks in a servitor like voice I'm sorry I thought I could be of assistance and it begins backing up into the spire I'm gonna quick I'm gonna quick draw my plasma pistol and end it you lay that putt, -putt. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like an abominable intelligence oh we don't God. want none of that uh, servitors right. don't think so I'm I think. Gonna... Oh, go ahead. I'm gonna roll to hit. <laughs> All right, go for it. No, this is great. I love throwing uh, servitors at you guys because you guys always smoke them. Well, while while these guys are are doing all of this, can I uh, hop in the back of that bus and just see what else is inside it? Yeah, you certainly can. Uh, so correct me if I'm wrong, but it, don't you, if you roll the pistol and it ruins, does that not mean it does? Only something? if I overcharge. Only if you overcharge. Got it. Okay. Mm. So I'm already capped on ruins, so I guess I don't get another point of ruin. Uh, but you mm. do hit it. Go ahead and roll me some damage. Also, you are rolling exclusively to the GM. I don't know if that's intentional or not. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering. I was like, I don't see a roll. Yeah, I had to <laughs> check my screens. Uh, okay. So 16 damage. Yeah. So you shoot the engine compartment and in a sparking sort of fit, the golf cart, quote unquote, uh, expires before you. And uh, what happens as the golf cart pretty much goes up in flames um, is that a cogitator unit uh, that literally is a servitor's head um, ejects from the flaming debris and just sort of lands unceremoniously at your feet. It is literally a server's head, or servitor's head. Oh, I'm just going to stamp on it. Okay. Crunch. <laughs> um, listen, so I think um, Sister Krantz is probably uh, pretty pretty adamant uh, about trying to help these people and kind of go wanting to go off on her own. Um, mm -hmm. However, I bring that up only because I feel like I I don't I I myself don't want to do that, and I feel like probably you all would be like, no, listen, you're stay with us, and, and like, give me that sort of like kind of. I could be convinced if you wanted to, right? Because we're like, well, I'm, I'm not worried I, about. I, I'm, I I'm not going to convince you yet. I'm damn this, yet. damn these vehicles. These people need our help, and I'm going there. And whether you're coming or not, in what vehicle of your choice, I will see you there, and the glory will be mine. All right, I'll go with the system. Can I take the burning wreckage and Bigger plop it me. on the engine to heat it up? So you really want to take the burning golf cart and put it on the engine block to defrost it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's your resilience and armor like? Let me ask that question. Uh, resilience and uh, my total resilience is nine. Okay. Uh, I tell <laughs> that you what. That hot enough. Hold on. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. No, you you go ahead. You go ahead. Say, if that thing's hot enough to like probably like warm that engine, it's probably gonna hurt you, right? That's why I was asking what his resilience like, otherwise, was. Otherwise, otherwise you're going to be there for like well, an hour. I've got a big uh, cloak. I can wrap my hands and arms in a big cloak, stick it in snow, get it wet, and then hope that my space marine resilience, as well as the force field that I have, will provide enough protection. I could just like scoop up a bunch of this with the, in the cloak and just dump it on the the engine block. Yeah. Uh, let's have you roll. A let's roll. Let's have you do a toughness, just a straight toughness check. And based on what you roll, I'll either do shock or wounds. Oof. Well, okay. uh, with that complication, uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll. 
I'll test roll convi- three please don't say dice. test conviction. Please don't say test conviction. Uh, why are you giving him ideas? Come on, because it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> the sister what, yeah. is secretly corrupting people. Tell you what, before I do I the just roll, came from the tower. Yeah, go ahead and give me a conviction, would be, roll, brother Harad. <laughs> well, that would be what a wrath die complication would be. I'm not. I'm not saying just to torture us. Torture us, not heresy. <laughs> Oh God! Jesus! You Jesus cannot Christ. roll nothing <laughs> except complications. The good news oh. is that our our GM is is currently full of ruin. The yeah. servitor head cut cuddles back. Oh God! Bah. I'm just trying nothing. to think. What can I do here? Um, nothing but complications. No. Um. When you when you when you fail a conviction test, there there's actually already it's already listed what happens. Uh, it doubles the DN or something, or it doubles the amount you take. Yeah, let me let me check because that's gonna matter. Um, right. Is that am I misremembering? It's been a minute. No, I think you're right. I just want to be extra sure. I'm so sorry, brother. Just watch our space brain true. start to mutate suddenly. <laughs> um, if anyone finds it before me, feel free to shout out. Radiation, combat effects. It's not in the quick references. Yeah, it's not. I couldn't find it on the quick reference. Um, you could just say it's on fire. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Right. Like that's that's my initial thought. But being on fire, it would be under, like, corrupted yeah, yeah, yeah. Would it be under like corruption or something. Yeah, that's gonna fall under corruption because that's yeah. the only time you do a conviction oh. test. All right, hold on. Let's right. find Which corruption. Is, you did describe this thing coming sort of from the shadows of the spire, so I assumed that was in play. Yeah, I yeah, it before. definitely is. But um, okay. I, I mean, burning, burning your and ruining your winter gear could be a, a faction a thing as well, which is a simple but that. Yeah, but that'd be pretty bad because that's like your winter gear, and now you're exposed to the elements and dealing with that. I, going I forward. never had any winter gear. Everybody oh. got winter gear. When we yeah, landed. I thought everyone had it. Yeah, yeah. everyone yeah. does get a set of it. I don't know. If oh, you here you go. It, but if you, you roll, a, if you roll. Oh wait, sorry. So he failed the conviction test, so now he has to roll the corruption test. Mm-hmm. It's so what you're thinking of. It says if you roll a complication on a corruption test and fail, you gain double the amount of corruption points you would normally gain. Mm. And conviction is not a corruption test. It says if you fail a conviction test, you gain corruption. Is that oh. the idea? Uh, let me re. Yeah, it specifically was... says to. It says if test. you fail a complication on a corruption test. Conviction, okay. I thought, was in order conviction. to resist. No yeah, way. Conviction roll is a corruption roll. It's the same thing. Conviction is, is what you use yeah. to block corruption. Gotcha. Yeah, I found I found where you're looking. So yes, it is double the amount of corruption points you gain, and if you roll a wrath critical, then you reduce the DN by two. So that's where we were thinking about the DN of change of the the test changing. Okay, so now so I have to figure did. out how much corruption is appropriate here. Um, um i think it's only one point is it right only now? yeah it depends are you are you pure right now brother yeah, all of us should be pure i don't think yeah um, yeah so then i think i think you're test. limited so in that case you, you would gain two because you did roll the critical or the critical failure mm-hmm. yeah and i think you're fine i think i think you're still technically pure even at two yeah i think i think it's still five yeah oh you have three total yeah, yeah. okay that's all oh, yeah you're the one who failed the last one too huh all right, so what happens narratively now that we've figured all that out? Again, welcome to us learning the system again. Um, as you pick up the burning cart and begin hurrying over to plop it on the engine block to defrost it, um, some of the flames begin to lick up your hands and, you know, even through the wrapped cloak that you did, you know, dipping it in snow, getting it wet, etc. The flames almost serpent like wrap up your arms and dig into the flesh there and you can feel just their corrupting influence the def- the defiling flame sort of biting at your skin um but thankfully you do shake it off eventually you slap down the uh burning cart onto the engine block you maybe wait about a minute you know long enough to defrost the engine and then with one backhand across the cart you send it careening off to the side you potentially have a working walker. I turned the key since I was still inside. It's uh, I'll try and start yeah. it. Is that another right. tech check? No, just turns over. So now it's upside down. I'm joking. 
Uh, we have transport, guys. If we want to try to run down, I mean, pick up the, the, the sister on the way. I believe that's what we will do. Onward! Am I able to find anything in the back, by the way? Uh, roll me an investigation. investigation. I think I think the only the only question I would have would be, do you rub it in my face when you yes. come pick me up? How are you guys constantly <laughs> rolling this? It's we know that you're maxed uh. out, so we're getting it out of the way now. Okay. It's because I'm here. I have I have a I have a oh my very God. very serious we problem, with Renji. Yeah. <laughs> It's full of chaos artifacts. I mean, okay. Uh, I don't have. I don't know the full stats for this game entirely. Looking at the dice, but we have rolled a crap ton of ruin. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think I have an idea of what the complication will be. So, Jacta, you're looking through the the ruins of the seat in the back of the bus, or what remains of the back of the bus, and as you step forward, you feel something grab your ankle, and you turn, and you see that one of the frozen has crept up from one of, you know, underneath one of the seats and is kind of like gripping your ankle going, uh, uh, well, I think he's going to, uh, I don't know if he would necessarily jump, but he's, uh, he's definitely going to try stabbing it with his sword. Okay. Go ahead and roll for stabbing. Stab, and before stab. another complication. That's... Uh, are there any modifiers to this? Um, I don't think so, no. Unless okay. you were to take time to aim. I don't think he would, considering the jump of the moment. Okay. You hit it. And uh, you don't have to roll damage. You just stab right. it in the stab it down pretty good. And uh, really, the only sort of ill effect is that uh, maybe you let out a little bit of a yelp or a little bit of, you know, gasp that the others would have noticed. Uh, but you, you kill the thing gripping you no problem. There's uh there's extra passengers in this one. Well, they didn't pay the fare, so dump them. I, I just sort of like <laughs> grab the body and sort of like I don't know if it's got like a back door like a lot of buses have, you just sort of it's shunts got, it out. The part of the floor is missing in the back. Oh, yeah, but I just shunt it out of the back floor hole. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, you guys get to walking, and uh, Kronz and Shank, you guys are, of course, way ahead of them at this point. And as you're trudging through the snow and the ash, um, it's almost like the wind is deliberately blowing in such a way that it's always hitting your face. So maybe you turn to the left, you know, to kind of put one cheek against the wind, and the wind shifts, so now it's blowing on your face. So you move your face back, shifts again. And no matter which way you turn, the wind is always on your face. I'm going to try something. Okay. This is a, this seems like a psychic phenomenon, so I'm going to try and deny the snow. Deny the snow. Deny the area around, <laughs> deny deny the area area. around me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'll roll the test. I shoot the... <laughs> hey, five successes? I'll give it to you. Uh, yes, actually, what happens is when you sort of try to nullify the psychic potential around you, what happens is you almost inexplicably form a bubble around you. Now, by bubble, I mean that it's still snowing. There's snow, still snow hitting your face and collecting on your clothes. But the difference is, is that the ash, the black particles, are sort of falling away from you. As in, they're not able to penetrate sort of a circular field that surrounds both you and Sister Kronz. And yes, uh, when it comes to the wind, it is now just a leisurely breeze from the west. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, let's keep going before it comes back and gets us again. Right before you hear clunk, 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 clunk. Right, and you, you literally hear about that time just clunk, 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 clunk. clunk. Heretics! <laughs> <laughs> No, just your idiots. <laughs> and yeah, you, you, you two turn to see the source of the sound, and uh, I'd like to imagine that, you know, you've got Torvian at the wheel, maybe. Uh, you've got Jacta maybe hanging out of a window, and Brother Harad either, at, you know, hanging off the roof, or otherwise, you know, not completely in the vehicle. <laughs> Was this, uh, Whatever made the hole in the floor, did that make a hole in the roof, too? 
Uh, no, it is only the bottom of the vehicle that has been cut off. You have a power sword, though. You do you have yeah, a power I'm not going to do that. I'll ruin the structural integrity. You've just got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a red toll. Yeah, Brother Harad will open the door as uh, as we clank our way up and say, we got it working. With haste. Good. Uh, you're not going to rub it in my face? Uh, Brother Harad holds his hand out for you to climb into the vehicle. Cool. He doesn't have a sense of humor. <laughs> give you, Yeah, I give you a, a, a solid uh, bro-like, you know, nod. Cool. Where's the Eldar? <laughs> she actually just sort of waves from the back of the bus. I've been here the entire time. Your presence is in the front to our god. Stop that. <laughs> stop that! <laughs> you, stop existing. It offends us. Well, okay, I'll just go back to being here in the corner. Alright. Oh, lord. But yes, so now that you've got transport, you guys make it easily to the hat block. And we're going to transition a map here. So... As you arrive at Hab Block Tango 3, um, what strikes you immediately is that the entrance to the Hab Block um, is what is essentially a three-story uh, square building made out of rockcrete um, with big sets of double doors to make up the main entrance. And behind this three-story building is actually a massive, almost skyscraper-like tower that has probably on the order of about 50 to 60 floors in it. Um, so it's a very large hat block. Um, but what's really catching your attention is the fact that some of the double doors have been ripped off their hinges. There are dead frozen that are scattered along the entranceway into the hat block. And you're also seeing that some of the bodies are actually still smoldering. This must be the place. The raid 40k. Um, this doesn't look surrounded. Well, not from the outside, maybe the inside. There is a breach in the hab block. It, 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 how tall are the double doors? Um, I would say they're about standard Imperium size, which I always imagine to be about three meters, maybe three and a half. So not tall enough for me to drive into. Correct. Yes, you could not drive the vehicle into the half block. <laughs> Does this look recent, by the way? Or is yes. this like long there's still frozen fire. Yeah, there's still oh, smoldering, gotcha. so yeah. Gotcha. Right. Oh, that's where we go in. But a word of warning. Considering what happened last time, if I detect even the slightest hint of duplicity, backhandedness, heresy, what you name it, and I start shooting, I expect you to join me. You Why what happened last time? Mm. Double cross. The Martian cult has a funny way of not following the Imperium. Martian, the, 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 the Martian cultists that we ran into are the ones who made the Frozen. That's what they're trying to say. He's an asshole. That sounds I'm lovely. To say. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, let's go. I think who wants to take point? Uh, I've got a go. shotgun, but I'm squishy. Yeah, I, I'm already leading the way. Okay. Uh, right. Was there any amount of uh, was it was that trek long enough for me to rest at an, any a little bit? Uh, regroup is an hour, correct? That wasn't anywhere close yeah, to Yeah, definitely hour. not. Yeah, so I would say, yeah, unfortunately, no, you have not had time to regroup yet. Okay. Um, but no, okay. Uh, as a group, uh, you step in through the entrance of the hab block, and inside, you again see uh, lots of dead bodies. And this time, it's not just frozen. You're seeing what probably was a still-living person at one point, uh, viscerally gutted and otherwise strewn across the uh, entryway where you currently are. Um, the lighting that is every so often in the ceiling uh, is flickering. And as you stare sort of past uh, the flickering lights, you see 
something out of a horror film or a horror game where you're seeing just blood and guts and it's not a pretty sight to say the least the charnel house something like that we must make haste but be cautious have faith we we're not hear too late. anything in the distance gunfire or anything like that no, and that's probably the most disturbing scene, uh, thing, is that it is eerily silent. I think we might be late. There's yeah. no place like home. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm boldly, step, I'm boldly stepping forward. Um, Doctor will follow. Have faith, we are not too late. I boldly go where other people have been before. And I know it's safe. Are these all doors, I'm assuming? Yes. So I've tried to show you guys, because uh, I know dynamic lighting sometimes cuts it off. Um, anything like, let me ping this. So anything like mm -hmm. this is a door. So there's a door here. Let me actually ping so the stream can see it. So there's a door here. There's a door up here. Well, it would help if I was on the right tool. Door there. Door there. And then you see more doors down to the north. Gotcha. Are these solid doors, or are they doors we could probably kick open? Uh, these are solid doors, and they're actually uh, connected to rooms of the hab block. Um, are they already open? So you could potentially, like, power sword them open if you wanted Is to. Is there a access, uh, access point on this side where I could try to hack them open? There is, and it's almost like a uh, a badge reader where, like, you would swipe a badge over it and maybe punch in a key code. Any of the bodies nearby have badges, or well, let me do a check for that. Yeah, I would say definitely an investigation for that. We'll assist. All right. So that's plus plus one die, right? Or no, you have to roll, it. Yeah. and then I get a die for each success. Way. You said it was an investigate, right? Mm-hmm. You get two. Nice. I could use that. All right. <laughs> Got. <laughs> By the Emperor. Did you find more than a key card? Yeah, I was say, so you do find a key card, but uh, similar to what I did to Jacta earlier, you're rummaging through the bodies, and one of the frozen that is literally split in half uh, suddenly moves, and you could flavor this differently if you want, but Torvian, I need you to give us your girliest scream if you would be so kind. <laughs> girliest scream? Yes. I don't I don't really <clears throat> <laughs> That was everything I hoped it was. <laughs> of course I'm gonna Academy follow that Award. up with a shot for my shotgun because <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Um, combat. You don't actually have to roll. Don't worry. You don't okay. have to roll. You got it. <laughs> You're fine. It's not going anywhere. It's in half. Nobody heard that, right? Everybody stops and looks at him. <laughs> yeah, it's just like... Oh, yeah, I found the all... key card. I thought it had a funky sigil on it, so I shot... Um, I shot a... a Key card. Here's here's key card. <laughs> so you use the key card, and the door actually sort of uh, rumbles open, and it actually works sort of like a Star Trek door, where the the doors just slide into the sides of the wall. And what you see on the other side is some form of like a business office, like you might find in a hotel or an apartment complex, where it's two seats that are before two terminals, public use terminals. Uh, there are no bodies or frozen or really any debris inside. It looks like this place has actually been rather untouched. You said there's terminals. Yes. And I have a key card. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to access a terminal. Okay. So does it have a key card slot or does it require a password? It does require a password. And as you're inspecting the terminal, trying to find a way in, um, Sister Kranz and Brother Harad, yeah. remind me, what are your passive awarenesses? My passive awareness is, um, minus that's three. Three? Okay. That's does not, that's just your rating, not your attribute, right? 
Uh, it's half of your total. If I yeah, half right. your total. Half of your total. Round up or down? Down, I believe. Two. Okay. I just looked at my passive awareness stat. Yeah, I yeah, think there should be a it, passive awareness stat on the sheet. Yeah, mine's three. All right. Uh, I believe you. Uh, it's on so attributes. Passive awareness three. Time. It's on the front. Yep, it's on the front one. I see it. I see it now. Okay. Yep. Three. So, uh, what you're seeing is that farther up the corridor, uh, in one of the patches of light uh, that maybe splits into a T junction, or what you can tell might be a T junction. Um, you're seeing uh, the hints that somebody is peeking around the corner. Yeah. Uh, then I was like, hello, hello. This is, my name is Sister Rosencrantz of the Adepta Sororitas. My squad is of the Veronius Flotilla. We are looking for Imperium. And the person timidly sort of steps out. Um, and... I'm not being stealthy. I'm literally shouting this. Yeah, yeah, you know, they timidly sort of step into view, ah. and what you're seeing is a ganger woman. So she's wearing, you know, to borrow a trope for a moment, she's wearing what Cyberpunk 2077 would normalize if you put it through the 40k ringer. So maybe a bit more spikes, maybe a bit more edge, and it's a little bit darker, of course, because it's the grim dark millennium. So... Uh, mm -hmm. The woman uh, starts stepping very cautiously towards you. You see that she is armed with a shotgun and that her clothes are splattered with dried blood. But uh, she stops maybe about right there, unless you tell her to stop before that. And she says, um, hello, are, are you the people that were on the radio? We are. Well, thank heavens. I... I was worried when I heard that scream that uh, the Frozen had gotten someone else. Um, my name is Salili. I heard I'm, that. I'm Well, we all heard it. Uh, the survivors and I, we, we were concerned. We, we thought that someone had gotten dismembered again. That was Only a scream, by the way. Um, well, um, are, are you here to get us out of here? Unfortunately, we are not here to evict you. Uh, we, we will give your position to the Ver Veronius Flotilla, and when they have the resources to spare, they will send down a rescue team. Uh, however, we were hoping that you'd be able to point us to the most efficient route to the uh, central spire after we had made sure that you were as safe as possible. Whatever security we could provide you, would pale and from the security we could provide getting rid of that blasted tower. Right, the tower. And she sort of looks past you all, looking at, you know, who's there. It's my and bedside she, manner. Right, right, right. And she says, she all right. She doesn't see me because um, I'm still typing. <laughs> uh, is it just the four of you? Five oh, the screamer's in there. And Jack the points into the room next to him. Yeah, Jack, you're like super chill. You're like, he's in there. <laughs> Love it. I mean, this is like back at the hive for me. What yeah, are you talking this is about? Like, yeah, that's what I mean. This is literally like, no, <laughs> nothing's changed. Dark corridors, <laughs> dead bodies everywhere. So much visceral. Yeah. And yeah. you're like, yeah, okay. Oh. All right. So, so uh, it's like home. <sighs> for a minute there, I was, yeah, I was feeling homesick. Yeah, it's awesome. So Salili sort of scratches her head and says, uh, all right, well, grab Mr. Screamer and uh, come join me up here. We've got a bit of barricade set up. Uh, not that it would keep someone like you out, but uh, I can at least show you a somewhat safe path through them. Let's go. How many are we with? I have about 30 women and children that are remaining. Uh, all the men are, well... Motions is she motions at the dead bodies everywhere. Mm. Very well. So oh. Brother Rod will, you know, walk up, and as he's walking up, uh, he'll say, "So, how did you all survive the tragic events that destroyed this hive?" So Harad, as you walk forward and say that, uh, there's maybe a spot, maybe, let me actually measure distances here. Uh, so about seven meters from her, you at first begin to feel a little bit uneasy, like 
Maybe something's wrong. And as you get closer and closer to, to Salili, what happens is you feel as if your skin is print picking and you just feel a sense of wrongness looking at Salili, almost like there's something supernatural or otherwise triggering your base instincts that just something is wrong about her. But uh, to answer your question, Lily, you know, without missing a beat, says, well, um, I guess you would call it luck or, or maybe a curse. I, um, I have some gifts. Are you oh. a psyker? No, quite the opposite. I'm curious. I think no, I'm going to be the only one who would know. Yeah, I think Shank I'm is the only one who would know. Yeah, I don't know what she, she's talking about. I know about. what she is. Mm -hmm. So I'm how close say, do you yeah. get, Shank? Just a little bit further back than Harad. Okay. So yeah, sure enough, as you get uh, within six or seven meters of her, you feel your connection to the Immaterium vanish. Like, completely cut off, vanish. And you, again, mm. feel that same sense of wrongness and almost maybe revulsion in your case towards the lily. Well, you better move and show us where everyone else is. Please. Right, right. Well, um, this way. And uh, she turns, sort of keeping an eye on you all, because, you know, she doesn't want to be shot in the back. But uh, assuming everyone comes along. Come uh, on, Screech. Huh? Come on, Screech. Uh, computers. This is my thing. Perhaps that would be the good time to tell you about the Xeno in our myths as well. They're part of our flotilla. Right. Xenos. Because why not? Sure. Bring him along. We are her. not a. We are yes. about as happy about it as you are. First time I humanize her. And of course, I'll don't ask her for you. alcohol. She doesn't have any. <laughs> All right. So let I'm me... actually going to hang back with um, uh, Inquisitor Shank, mm -hmm. uh, and say, uh, Agent. You he seem. Keeps, he keeps stressing he's not actually Agent. an Inquisitor. Uh, Agent Shank, so you seem nonplussed about the survivor. Oh, I'm not nonplussed. No, far from it. I'm calculating. And I uh, I turned on an aura there so you can see anything in that yellow aura is completely cut off from the warp. Uh, does that affect my faith? Do no. I feel, if I, I just remember feel correctly, your faith does not work on the same principle as psychic powers do. Uh, she still unnerves me. Yes, like, so everyone oh, yeah, is still yeah. unnerved by her. <laughs> well, I don't know why, but I do not like her. She makes my skin crawl. I assume you you didn't say that out loud, because you're like, to Agent Shank. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to stand back here. <laughs> I'm just going to say to uh, Brother Rod, it's not her fault, but please keep your tempers in check. She's the only thing that's yeah. keeping out the mellow. Well, the madness outside the bay. She's the first one we've met that's not pointing to the ground uh, of the viscera or pointing mm -hmm. to the ranger. Show some respect. <sighs> I'm just impressed they've survived. I as well. For now. I do Are wonder how they did survive. Oh, let's keep going. Yeah, I was going to say, so uh, you guys are walking and talking, and you do get to a T intersection. And uh, waiting for you on either side are two doors that uh, lead into an open space. <laughs> and you see that there are hastily constructed barriers of furniture and overturned debris. Um, and Salili uh, guides you through the rightmost path over here and uh, steps inside one of the larger rooms. And of course, you are free to follow her if you so choose to. I do. All right. So uh, as you come into this large open space, 
and I'll move everyone so they can see. Uh, as you move into this large open space, uh, sure enough, uh, you are seeing about 20 to 30 women and children. Uh, they are huddled uh, against one of the walls. And over here to the left side of the screen, I think you can see it. Let me check lighting. No, ah, you can't see it. Uh, so let me move. Let me move this so you can see it. Uh, you should now see what is essentially a shrine to the god emperor. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, yes, uh, you see that most of the women and children are clustered around the shrine, and they are feverently, uh, feverently praying. Uh, one or two of them, though, notes the lily coming back in and says, Oh, praise the emperor, you've returned. Every time you leave, I, I feel as if the madness will set in. And slowly sort of goes, All right, all right, I'm here now. Calm down, calm down. I... I the people on the radio are here, and uh, at hearing that, most of the women and children perk up and they turn, and uh, the children all come running up to you all and and saying, "Hey, are you here to save us? Oh, please tell us you're here to save us." We are not here to save you. <laughs> <laughs> are you here to save us? No. <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> Of all the responses I expected, that was not one of them. No. Space Marines. Yep. Why we let the Space Marine leave? He's a people person. Yeah. Okay, I think what happens is the children look a little bit confused, and they go, Okay, big guy, but if you're not here to save us, are, are you going to kill us like they did to my dad? No, we are here to make sure that you're as defended as possible as reinforcements and a rescue team is dispatched. Use a lot of big words, mister. We have to go fight other He's things. We guy. don't want to come with you. We don't want you coming with us. One of those things. And their eyes sort of gloss over at this point, like the excitement is fading. But then they see Sister Cross and they go, you're pretty. Why do you do your hair like that? Everyone in my order does my hair like this, little girl. <laughs> the blood of my enemies, that's how. It's a great <laughs> my friends, What my friends were trying to say is that we're trying to save everyone, and no one is safe from the madness of that tower. And uh, so Lily gets the hint and says, all right, you go play or something. God, I hate kids. And the kids go, okay, and they go back to doing kid things in the corner. Uh, kid but things in the corner. <laughs> The but, resilience uh, of the of a child's mind is something special. That's certainly a word for it. Uh, but now you have all questions. All I hear is kids in the background. One, two. Oh God! Buckle your shoe. <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> but uh, so Lily says. But uh, you have questions. I might have answers. Um, I guess take a seat over here. And she motions at some of the chairs in that were probably in this meeting room, just still stacked in a corner. And she moves over and, you know, pulls one off the stack for herself and sits down. Now, whether or not you all do the same is entirely up to you. Uh, I'll stand by the door. Okay. I'm going to stand back here and keep an eye down the hall. Because for as much as I dislike her, I'm going to stand. Well, I'm going to sit in the chair. Okay. Um, I'm going to lead the huddled masses in a little prayer. Okay. Give them a little bit of solace. I like it. Is it going to be a song? Uh, no, probably just like I don't know, some some ecclesiastical rite kind of thing. <laughs> like I might bless their their altar, you know, or con like kind of symbolically consecrate it or whatever. Lo-fi canticles to the emperor. <laughs> no, my initial thought, as horrible as it was, was Sister Kratz going over to the shrine and going, "All right, everybody, do you know the words to Akuna Matata?" <laughs> but no, yes. So, Kratz, you step over. You begin leading the masses in a solemn prayer to the emperor. Um, but Shank, uh, you and Slily sitting across from another, say uh, Slily starts with, "All right, where would you like me to begin?" The beginning. Well, there's the a beginning. lot of beginning. You're gonna have to be a little bit more specific. <laughs> so, uh, I'd like to start with the frozen zombies. That would be a good start. 
Pro right. Officer in mind. And to start my stories at the beginning. <laughs> Unless you're Quentin Tarantino, you might start in the middle. <laughs> so uh, she goes, right, uh, the Frozen, as we have come to call them. Um, well, I guess we have to back up even further then. So when the Great Rift opened, or what I'm told is the Great Rift opening, basically the the skies were sundered and the entire planet was ripped through some god emperor forsaken place. Um, most people were torn apart by things. I don't even know how to describe them, but all, all I know was that anyone who was around me, anyone that I was nearby and myself were spared from whatever those beings were. And when the sky finally returned to normal, uh, you know, the survivors like myself and those who survived with me, we began picking up pieces and, oh dear. And she pauses, takes a breath and says, okay, sorry, sorry, I was just a little bit rambly there. Basically, the, the survivors, uh, like me, we were contacted by some of the Mechanicus. They wanted, um experimental subjects to counteract a plague that was affecting the survivors. And we didn't think anything of it. We thought, oh, yes, they're, you know, trying to fix us. So uh, a few of my group went. And um, about three days later, they returned as one of the Frozen. Okay. That seems to corroborate what I've seen. This plague, I've seen it being referenced. Is it real? What are symptoms? I'm honestly not sure. I guess it could be in something relation to the spire that's spewing out the ash and the black particles. Whatever now, you would call that. The crux of the matter. When did that start happening? It started as soon as we came back to normal space. Well, she doesn't say that. As soon as we came back to the sky being uh, normal. Hmm. Any idea who's doing it? Mechanicum? Planetary governor? Hive governor? Nobles? Well, uh, I mean, there's really no problem with me saying this now. I think that asshole of a planetary governor is doing it, because that's his spire. Hmm. Makes sense. Have you seen any other survivors? Uh, not for a while. Ever since the Frozen started showing up, numbers have been dwindling fast. In fact, uh, until you showed up, I was fully convinced we wouldn't have survived the night. You might still not. Ooh, hey. <laughs> your, your group is really upbeat. Has anyone told you that? What is colder, outside or us? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Well, um, as it stands, our objective is to simply reach the spire and stop the governor, if it is indeed the governor. And whatever device is upsetting the balance here, that's our objective. Do you know how I can reach the main spire quickly, expediently? Put an end to all of this. She sort of strokes her chin in thought. Yeah, yeah, they're... There might be something, but uh, you got anybody who's savvy in tech on your squad? Yeah, we do. Minus a pair of pants, but yes. Hey, I wore my brown pants today. Oh, Screaming Boy. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it could work. There's... um. Up on the roof, up on the uh, in the penthouse level, there is not only a landing pad, but there is a. Uh, I'm trying to remember the 40k term for it. Basically, it's a it's a railway, but it's only between the spires. And I'm just trying to remember what they call that in 40k. Is it still oh. a sky car? Oh, there's a word. It's just a monorail. Maglev. Monorail. My basically, it's a maglev though. You 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 could you know basically hover and move along a track is what I'm getting at here. Um, but she says, yeah, there's a there's a maglev up on the roof that goes in between all the major spires. 
Um, you'd have to get it working again, though. It, I mean, no, nobody here has technical expertise, so I couldn't tell you what's working or not working in it. Is the well, if uh, it's got a if it, if it needs defrosting, we have a solution for that. Yeah, as long as you have another possessed golf cart. Are the upper levels of this hab unit dangerous? No, they're they're pretty cleaned out at this point. Um, the only problem is uh, that. And uh, she points at one of the walls where there's a working screen. And as you look and actually take in the wall she's pointing at, it was a little bit uh, hard to pick out in the darkness at first, but now that you're here and your eyes have adjusted, uh, what you're seeing is there's sort of like security camera feeds, very hastily configured and otherwise placed onto this wall. Uh, and they're the dim monitors that are displaying these picked feeds. Uh, what you're seeing is a massive, and I mean absolutely gigantic mass of Frozen heading up the main street towards the building. Oh, that's not good. I don't have any more grenades for that. Jorvian, how big yep. an explosion could we have if we were to detonate the uh, walker outside? Probably not very, in all honesty. It doesn't run on, like, nuclear fission. It's Mechanicus made, isn't it? I would do a tech check for that really quick, but from it's probably... my guess on it is just a standard combustion engine. Because yeah, I it's... would say it's it's probably combustion. Well, Promethean is designed to explode. Promethean Three. is designed to burn, not explode. There is a difference. I would say you could maybe make a few Molotovs out of the bus, but it ain't gonna explode like you probably want it to. Uh, what we could, however, do is we have some fairly strong people on our side, and we can flip it on its side and block the entrance. That's a better idea. How about we give these civilians and see Lily the truck, let them evacuate, and we go up on to the maglev. How many people can fit on there? If we start eating them, would they all be able to fit with the missing floorboards? It wouldn't be comfortable, but yes, they could do it. Okay. We... So you su you suggest evacuating them, but to where? Anywhere but here. Would the ministorium or not ministorium? I'm sorry, uh, mechanicus place actually be okay now that it, now it's abandoned? No, it's, it's got has... crates full of frozen. But... Yeah. Well, I mean, look, better than living frozen. No, Your but favorite I'm... buddy raises her hand. What's up, Arlara? I the could diner? lead them to a safe spot. I actually could even take them to the craft world if you wanted. So we have a bunch of Imperium held by Eldar? I would again remind you that the craft world is an allegiance with your rogue trader. They wouldn't be held. They would be, what's the human expression? Guests. guests? Yes, guests. Hostages. Anyway. <clears throat> I do not believe that the best place for these imperial citizens would be in your Xenos place. I hate to say this, but where else are we going to stick them? Well, they've survived this long. If we give them this Vox unit and the ability to contact Veronese's fleet, they'll be we able to the schedule unit. a pickup. I'm sure we can find another one in the Spire. We won't need the truck, just give it to me. You're a ganger, where's your hidey hole? And slowly, actually, almost as if seeing you for the first time, Jack does, she actually kind of smiles very warmly at you and says, Ah, oh, fellow ganger. Yeah, I mean, I've got my own holdouts in this hab block, but uh, let's just say my usual hidey hole down the street isn't going to work. Okay. Mm, I am I am torn because that. Do you obviously know any weapon is... stashes? Not really. 
Anyway, uh, Eric, you were saying something. Uh, I was like, I'm super torn because obviously that seems like the easiest way to save these people, but also like telling people to have to go to a craft world sounds real bad mm -hmm. and will not be something I recommend. Um, Your faith will not allow it. Yeah, exactly. I'll tell them that no, I'm just going to have to believe a little harder. Um, you can just arm all the kids. That's what I was asking if she knew where the, where any weapons caches were. She said no. So yeah, and uh, I don't to, think we have enough weapons for all these people. To expand on that, she says no. Uh, this is pretty much the only working weapon left, showing her combat shotgun. Okay, I think we should evacuate them. I believe where, that's the case. Agreed. But, I like, believe the emperor will have a plan for them. What if the Emperor's plan was the craft world? I'll give you the worst look. And <laughs> Brother Rod will sling the box unit off of him and tell uh, Salili the uh, the all the necessary codes in order to get in contact with Veronese's flagship. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We could text C. Lily with us. I've got a feeling she's very useful in the center of that hive. So who's going to lead the women and children? The old are, of course. So you'll send them with the Eldar. I have something old with the Eldar. Spirit stones. She'll do as I say. And if she is in fact an ally of our benefactor, then going up to the flagship would not be a problem. And in fact, the more quickly she does it, the better for her. I'm going to try to use the Vox unit to contact Veronius to see if we can actually get a signal to the sh to the flotilla before right. we do any of this, because if we can't reach them, they're not going to be able to reach them either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say this happens without a roll, uh, but I do have an important question. Are you just keeping the Vox unit contained you know, separately, or are you going to maybe try to hook it into the building and maybe try to bring up like a screen to talk through? I would do that second option. I would do everything I could to boost the signal because we need to. Right. So uh, I actually wasn't thinking I'd need this token, but I'm glad I prepared it. Uh, so uh, let's say you take over one of the, the picked feeds, the security picked feeds, and uh, appearing on one of the screens is none other than rogue trader Jaquel Veronius himself. And I'll make him a little bit bigger because he is larger than life. And uh, he says, ah, one of my uh, exploratory teams. Uh, how's it going? We found some survivors. That's good. We need to know what to do with them. Would you be able to get a... Out of character? Tell them that our ships crashed, dude. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't think that's a matter of gaming for me we to say to you. Your <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> oh, the, the the shuttle. We 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 kind of crash landed the shuttle accidentally. It, it was the pilot's fault. Um, <laughs> He's dead, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's his fault. I mean, it was totally his fault, anyways. Okay, that's um, concerning. But hey, you're still alive, so kudos about that. Uh, what can you tell me about the situation? Kind of chaos curse thing going on um i'm sorry there dead. must be some interference you said chaos yes walking dead unhappy things is this the kind of thing i should be nuking from orbit not while we're here yes <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm just gonna take that as an advice hey. to maybe nuke it after we've evacuated the you. inquisitor the inquisitor has now become one of my best friends <laughs> you know, many many claim that they wish to vanquish the enemies of the imperium but if that was true most people would have to uh, be prepared to vanquish themselves and mm -hmm. so I, I you know i i look at you and i go yeah respect <laughs> so is this a situation uh, where only torvian has like the the box unit and I mean you could easily like especially brother Rod you could easily just take it from him and speak to the rogue trader instead. Do you I'm even need gonna. to? It's it's 
Listen, can talk listen, Chief, I'm going to need you to pause on the blowing up the planet, all right? <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> saying blow up the planet. Back it was just grenade. saying nuke it from orbit. That's not the yeah. exterminatus. Sure. Well, but the, it's just but the a, nuke... a city exterminatus. <laughs> Hidden's going back in the nuke. We'll discuss that more off the planet. And <laughs> Private Volcard, may I speak with uh, the Veronius? It's an open channel. All of us can, he can hear all of us. Mr. Veronius, the situation is that we crash landed on this planet due to uh, fell warp uh, issues that tore down our our ship. We've found traitor Astartes here, old old legion, uh, and it appears that there is some sort of issue in the planetary governor's spire that needs. A more personal approach but we did find survivors that do need rescue i see we also found an eldar there are lara she says she knows you she a brunette lara come here she's literally right next to you and yes she is a brunette oh, looks yeah. brownish to me i remember you you were part of the uh, Exarchs meeting party. I remember you. Interesting. And Alara sort of rolls her eyes and says, yes, I remember you as well. You made about six passes at me. Oh, yeah, I do remember doing that. We should still hook up sometime, you and I. But uh, more to the point, uh, how many survivors are we talking about evacuating? Roughly around 30 or so. Okay. Mostly women and children. Yeah, yeah, closer I think. to forty. I'm, I'm, I'm surviving so far. You're not being evacuated. Given the current state of the planet, I suggest full biocontamination procedures. Understandable, especially since there is a uh, warp taint, as you have put it. Prepare to jest. And, the and crazy you see mechanicus it. people as well. Mechanicus, you say? What's what's going on with the mechanicus? Um, the zombies that I was telling you about are animated by a combination of some kind of sorcery, I guess, and machine insides. We have a rogue um, Martian Magos, a Magos Domina. I feel like I should have sent you guys in with bigger weapons. Yeah. I'm always down for bigger guns. Uh -huh. Do we remember... Has Veronica uh, figured out that I'm an Inquisitor yet? Or a part of an Inquisitor? Not actually working from, uh, but a part of a retinue. Run that by me again? Has uh, Veronica figured out that I'm not actually working for him, but actually the Inquisition? I think he knows, because it is his job to know, but he hasn't said anything to that effect. Well, I'm going to assume my cover's not broken. Okay. Mr. Veronica, uh, all mechanic and personnel upon this planet are now ex from their actions considered uh excommunicate 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 cartus excommunicado excommunicado traitorus you will not help them or assist them in any way and in fact you must purge them when you see them i see do you have something to uh well I'm not going to do the paperwork, but do you have something that I can tell the person doing paperwork to sign off on? I'll tell him when I get back. Ominous. I like it. And then, uh, Eric, I think you were trying to say something. Oh, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. So, uh, Veronia says, right, well, uh, just give me a set of coordinates, uh, Looks like we're having trouble getting a stable air pattern around that hive that you're in. Uh, I wouldn't try to send in another one to the hive directly, but if you can get your survivors to the exterior of the hive's walls, we can probably pick them up there. I believe that's something that we can do. Um, can you tell me how quick that cloud is spreading? There's a dark cloud em emanating from the central spire. And it's getting bigger. Can you tell me how quickly it's spreading? So uh, Veronia sort of shouts at someone off screen. Hey, turn the Auspex feed. This location. Okay, thanks. 
Well, uh, do you want the good news or do you want the bad news? Is there actually good news or is it just more bad news? No, there is absolutely no good news. I figured. That cloud is about two times the size of the spire at this point. And he looks off screen as if he's being talked to and he says, right, right. Projections are that it will cover the entire planet in less than 12 hours. No, I didn't like it anyway. And I think that cloud is what's causing you issues with getting a lock on, on our position. So, Well, it seems like we have our path forward. You have survivors to get out of the hive, or maybe our Eldar friend does, and you need to go to stop whatever's going on in that cloud generating spire. Okay. If you don't hear from us in the next, I have to go check my chronometer. 48 hours... Purge everything. 48 hours? Cloud's going to be covering the whole planet in 12. 12. Oh, okay. 11, 11 hours, 59 minutes. <laughs> right. I will have one of the cog boys on my ship cook up a inventive way to send you to the Emperor's Mercy. And then... You won't need it. <laughs> Veronius just sort of smiles, actually, because, you know, he's a rogue trader. He's not in trouble. He's going to smile. He says, oh, well, you're in trouble. <laughs> he says, well, you, uh, I suppose, have a daunting task ahead of you. Just know that I don't do hazard pay. And then he uh, you... turns off his end of the box, uh, leaving you. Wait, y'all are getting paid? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that. Oh. Fine. Yeah, quite handsomely indeed. <laughs> All right. So I think uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a five to ten minute break here uh, as we get set up for our next scene. So stick around. We'll be back in five to ten minutes.
I saw right? that in my heart, like God. drop. I know, man. Taco Bell. Oh. That's what I have to look forward to. Dude, this is it's it's the worst part. I know we should be going back, but man, my, no, my, we're my, already my, back. My like the stream oh. is hearing this. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <'Cause> my, my <laughs> soap, yeah, I, okay, fine. Then I'm I'm committing. I'm, just my soapbox was that. Um, man, it just sucks so much when I look at like how much, it, how expensive Mexican food is at a restaurant. I'm like, dude, this is like a dollar. <laughs> like, come on, this is street food. <laughs> dude, you know what in I mean? New York, in New York, where I am, all of the Mexican restaurants are super upscale, really nice, twenty dollars a meal restaurants. Yeah. Like, I know how to make this shit. It's like five not, bucks to make yeah. double what I'm getting. Yep, you get that's two dollars exactly like a cart too, or a right? food truck yeah, or something. Yeah. That's exactly my point. I'm not spending ten dollars for your street corn, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not bad, but it's like I'm Taco agree. Bell won the franchise wars. All really restaurants are that. Taco Bell. <laughs> it won the but franchise it's wars. <laughs> it's hard to get good Puerto Rican fare outside of New York and Florida. So what I'm hearing is you know, I need to add you know not only an about. underwater hive, but I need to add a corporal hive where we have food wars going on. Got it. Shokugeki? What? Hmm. Long as Stallone that. is involved. <laughs> Anyway. All right, but uh, welcome back, stream. I'm sure you're very confused about what just happened there, and um, I have no Sorry. good answer for that. But welcome it's back, not, all the same. Not controversial at all. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna skip ahead just a little bit, um, where the survivors uh, minus Salili. Salili will be replacing Ranger Alara in your little squad. Um, Alara and the survivors will be getting into the Walker. And ahead of the oncoming horde will essentially be led out of the hive to presumably picked up by Veronius elsewhere. Um, the rest of you, though, are going to journey to the penthouse. And the penthouse, you can get there one of a few ways. Um, but probably the most reliable way is going to be by the stairs. And I have to ask a very important question of all of you as I get this page set up. Uh, what is uh, everyone's athletics like? Oh, um, oh God, uh, six. <laughs> Not great. Not great at six. all. Six. Eight. Would be much higher. So six is you. fine. What are you talking about? Six is pretty high. Yeah. My, my total well, is a four. I looked at my ranks compared to my armor. My armor is doing most of the athletics for me. Yeah, seven. Okay. I need everyone to roll me in athletics, please, as you go up these stairs. And what I would say is that the DN here is going to be a three. And as long as you hit that three, you are fine. No shock, no problem. But if you do not make the three, you're going to take 1d3 shock. See, I wish you hadn't. What is this right, Can I shift that? Because now the dice know what yeah, to not give know. me. So, to wait. answer Eric's question, though, yeah, what, what does that back. represent? So yeah, like, uh, what, that what's represents wrong with these staircases. Is it was it just the endurance of it all? Just or the like, endurance. Are, is, yes. Are of parts you missing or we're doing the jumping? Like, like, okay. Um, I'm trying to think of the example of the that I, I had in my we're head. Just traversing this. Oh, and this is sort of the the abstraction. See, I told you. I got you. You yeah. spend um, one of Wrath three rolls. <laughs> Torvian, you are the perfect medic, dude. Just, no wonder you have such a glum personality. It's like, I I can't roll. <laughs> Just <laughs> nothing ever goes my way. You have two See, rounds. You, you don't understand. This, you. this is why I don't play the tabletop anymore, because my dice hate me, no matter what I'm using for dice. Yeah, dude, same. All right, so the example I was going to give was uh, if anyone's familiar with Final Fantasy VII, either the old or the yes. remake, you know that part where you can literally walk up Shinra Tower and skip yes. everything? That's literally what you guys have chosen to do, where, yeah, like the first five or ten stories, everything's great, but by, like, story 20, your legs are burning, <laughs> you know, your thighs oh, yeah. are starting to seize up maybe a little bit, and... Actually, all of you push through it pretty well, except for Torvian. And Torvian... I would like to shift that one. <laughs> I was going to say, you actually, I saw two fives, so you guys could get uh, two points of glory if you so wished. I will shift one to glory. All right. Uh, uh, so so everyone... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend a glory to try to roll another die. <laughs> yep, yeah, you can do that. Is that okay? Had one before. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Um... Let me see no. Here. So just let him walk. Let him walk the fat off. <laughs> walk it <Yeah>. off. <laughs> I did not type that in right. Uh, 
I can't remember the code to roll a die. So just forward. be slash R space 1D6. Oh, that's why. Forward slash. Yeah, I, I was doing an exclamation point for... I rolled a four, yay, so I oh, pass. <laughs> so... Torvian is a little bit lagging behind, but, you know, he, he steals himself and pushes through the pain. And eventually you guys arrive at the penthouse floor. And as you actually step out of the staircase, you see that you're in what is essentially a service corridor um, rather than the main staircase that might actually lead to the penthouse itself. And uh, so Lily, uh, you know, actually takes all of this in stride. You know, she's a little bit out of breath, but so are the rest of you, even with your successes. And she goes, okay, uh, forgot how much that sucked. Uh, this there way. There wasn't an elevator or anything? No, not working. I could have tried to fix it. Hold on, I'm just, I'm just going to take a look at Tolkien for a second. Like, I, I didn't really realize what your physique was. Are, are you in shape? <laughs> I am. I, yes, I am. I am in a shape. Mm. I'm just sort of crouched down on my on my augmented legs. I'm just like, what? The, the, why are you so slow? Some of us don't have fake legs. That sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> I'm I, I'm the, apparently the only one not getting paid for doing this job. <laughs> that also sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> yeah. Do not I worry. I am not receiving well. compensation either. They feed says you, the don't space you? marine. Yeah, I was gonna say it says <laughs> the space has marine. no need duty. for money. <laughs> yeah, I look at duty is its own reward. <laughs> So nice. Lily sort of just looks at you all and says, you know what, you're a fun bunch. I love it. But uh, this way, I think. Okay. And uh, she steps uh, towards the staircase uh, sort of swirling up. So every time you see uh, one of these yellow bars, uh, that is actually like a set of stairs or a ramp. And uh, as she steps into this open area here, uh, what you see is that in sort of an ancillary room with a bunch of crates that seem to contain uh, things like fire extinguishers, things like uh, extra fuel, uh, what you see is that the ramped surface leads out to uh, what is essentially a landing pad. And it's a wide open area about, if I have my distances correctly, uh, it's about 12 by 12. Yep, so 12 by 12. Uh, meters in size uh, so you could conceivably fit a good aircraft on this thing um, but what really catches your attention and while you're here is that on the northern end of this landing pad is what is essentially a maglev train uh, that is currently just sitting on the track unpowered and uh, so Lily just sort of steps out and you notice that the snow that has gathered on the roof um, is mostly black at this point, or the particulate that's on the roof is mostly black. But when Slalili steps out and her quote-unquote aura sort of covers the ground, what happens is the black particulate sort of evaporates away, so it's just the snow that remains. Oh, that's a neat trick. It's not a trick. It must have something to do with why they survived. Agent Schenk, are you sure you're not... You seem knowledgeable of what it is. You're my, you're my new best friend. She's a petrol. Not a petrol. Uh, what's the word? A null. She's blank. a blank. Pariah. Yeah, she's a prior. Blank. She has no presence in the warp. In fact, she's the antithesis of it. I can't manifest my powers. Demons can't see her. The warp has no effect in this area. Seems useful. What happens whenever you're fighting the Frozen, if they get close to you? They sort of seize up and shake. Yep, you're my See? new best friend. Told you, useful trick. I feel like I'm being scouted for something. Am I being scouted for something? Yes. Cool, I want his pay, pointing at Torbian. I don't get paid. Right. I'm, just letting you know that I'm getting paid instead of you. <laughs> Deal. You won't be working for Veronius. I... 
Probably well, about that train over here, you know, just sort of like okay, just like if you could uh, see what you could do about that train. And yeah, gonna, uh, I just realized I that my here? original maglev token is missing, and I can't find it in my library. So I'm just gonna hastily draw. There is a no train. I'm just gonna hastily draw a square here. So that's how this, I'm gonna fix it okay. because there is no train. Oh, that's where it is. Yeah. So the orange square is where the maglev is. Uh, if you actually continue to the right on the map, you actually enter into the penthouse itself. Uh, and I'll scout a, that. I'll work on the maglev. A quick glance in. Do I see anything of note? You do. Uh, oh. So, Brother Harad, as you sort of look into the penthouse area, uh, what you're seeing is another set of crates. Uh, this looks more like somebody was trying to pack their belongings in a hasty fashion. So maybe it's less crates and more like suitcases and other storage containers. Um, you know, uh, but what you're seeing is that this penthouse is actually rather well furnished. Um, you're seeing lots of artwork, like real artwork, not the fabricated stuff, uh, including sculptures, paintings. Uh, there's even, if you listen like very closely, you can hear uh, what sounds like hymns. And sure enough, you sort of look around the corner and you see actual like cherubs, like servo skull sized cherubs sort of floating around singing, quote unquote. <clears throat> Never did get used to that. So her name is Silili, C E L I L L Y. You'd have to explain that one to me because I'm I'm drawing. No, I'm blank. asking. I'm asking the name of spell? the the NPC. C E C I L L Y. That's how it's in my notes. Is S I C E L I L Y? Could be C. Uh, yeah, it is C. Can you guys not see her uh, her name tag? Very small. I, I, I zoom out a bit so uh, that's what we're doing. C -E -C -E yeah, I see it. Yeah, C E L I L Y. Oh, yeah, it's really why? Yeah, I don't know why I didn't think of that right in front of me. Yeah, All right. Sometimes the most obvious are the uh, easily overlooked. C E L I. So tech check for the maglev. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm covering our backs. Uh, that's why yeah, I'm, I'm just here. covering this area. So I took a glance at it. Ha! I did not get a critical fail. <laughs> Is it bad that I have so, to be happy uh, like that? So, <laughs> good news, bad news time. Which, you, which one <laughs> you want first? So I don't Basically. get an epic fail, but I also don't fix the thing. Yeah. Basically, Torvian, that's like that, that's that's as best. That's that's the best optimal outcome for you, right? That's basically a crit. <laughs> not, <laughs> nothing not bad crit. happens. <laughs> yeah, nothing bad <laughs> happening. So, right. good news. We'll start with good news. Good news, you can fix this. Bad news. It's going to take 11 hours and 39 minutes. No. It's going to require scrapping something very valuable to your team right now. Can you Not guess what it is? the plasma pistol. Not the plasma pistol, something else. Not oh, the box God. unit that we don't have anymore. Something even worse. Not Brother Harad. It is something Friendship. Brother Harad is carrying. A boulder? A power sword? You're close. Oh, the refractor field? Mm-hmm. And my thinking on that is I'm not trying to punish Brother Harad directly. My thinking is, is that because the shield is literally repulsing matter, that it can be used in a similar principle to the maglev. Yeah, about yeah it. no, that that super checks out. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I, I immediately went there when you as soon as you said it, I was like, no, that yo, yeah, you're making the maglev effect, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Hey, uh, oh, br yeah, brother like Harad. It. Yes, private. Um, I, I I need your your little refractor field so I can fix this thing. Brother Harad immediately throws him the refractor field. Um, I'm gonna make an athletics check so I can have something else to fail to catch this thing. Don't do that. Oh, it's a good it. talk. Good. <laughs> Flies off the roof. <laughs> you guys did this to yourselves. I want this known. I'm gonna spend two ruin to do this. I need to see an athletics check, buddy. <laughs> Damn Jesus. it! Can I do the athletics to make sure it's a good toss? You may. You may. <laughs> so count as like an assist. Yeah, we'll count it as an assist. <laughs> Okay, good toss. Okay, so toss I get five good. additional dice. <laughs> mm. 
This is how we inject fun into Warhammer 40k. Yeah, really? You didn't add wow. five dice. You did not add Oh, no, five I did dice. the modifier. No, I did throw a bonus dice. For athletic? No, that's the same athletic score you rolled last time. So yeah, it doesn't look like I did five bonus dice. It may not have registered if you didn't click, like if you just clicked the button for whatever mm. reason, it it's weird. Yeah, the sheet needs to update. Uh, you need to click out again. of the thing. There we go. There we go. Hey, look at that. So yeah, he tosses the refractor field, and you go toosh, catching it out of the air. Definitely, you're fine. You no catch fear. it. Yay! Shift Technically, for you're glory. in a glory. You do earn a glory. It's that good of a catch. <laughs> shift for more glory. Sure, I'll shift for more glory, unless that makes me drop the thing off the side. No, of the you can shift for more glory. You can shift both okay. of those for glory. Oh, you can only shift one per test. Ah, well, then you may shift the one. So we get two glory, and I'm going to do a tech check now to see if I can repair this thing. All right. And so now let me uh, reduce my uh... a four. All right. So here's how we're going to play this out. So Torvian, you get to work getting the refractor field to produce the maglev effect, which would get the train running. However, as you start working, both Sister Kranz and Brother Harad, you both see and hear the sounds of metal scraping on metal. As Sister Kronz, you look at the staircase you just came up. You maybe go over to the edge and peer down. You guessed it. Frozen are coming up it. So they're probably going to be here within a few minutes. Brother Harad? Oh, yeah. They're coming up the stairs or they're climbing up the... Uh, how many? A lot. Well, let's put it this way. You don't want to be here in the next five minutes. That many. Okay, cool. Right. Are you gonna holler out so, to the team? Uh, well, no. Instead, I think all you hear uh, would be the opposite. Instead of instead of hearing me, you just hear bolt fire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you just so, you just hear something like this, right? Ooh, soundboard. Hey, um, what's going Where's on back there? Many of them. And you know, and yeah. So like, that's we've got drums of we got fuel. Five minutes. Curses and high gothic. We've got drums of fuel. We do have drums of fuel. You do have drums of fuel. Yeah, how big are these drums? Are we talking like Is that gonna be enough? Yeah. Forty K size drums that are like bigger than bigger than a car, or are we talking like manageable size drums? You got a space marine. Bigger I was gonna say you do have a space manageable. marine. <laughs> but the problem is it's not just uh Sister Kronz and the staircase you guys came up. Brother Harad, you're looking towards the uh penthouse main door. And you see that it is beginning to buckle inward as the Frozen begin to slam against it. This one here on the bottom? Yes. Uh, I'm going to go straight into moving crates. The biggest, metalist, heaviest object I can find in this room. Okay. I think that would actually be this scorpion-like structure or sculpture to your left. Uh, it yeah. seems to be made out of almost like a bronze. It's getting moved over and put in that door. Alrighty, go ahead and roll me in athletics. I'm sure you're going to pass, but I did want to give you guys a chance to get more glory. You mean to give you more ruin? Oh, wait, no, no you're you know full. that too. <laughs> yeah, see, you get it fine. You can shift for glory there. Um, Yeah, I'll shift for glory. All right. Time to go, Screecher. So, we'll say I'm that... I'm still uh, working on it. We'll say that uh, you are able to uh, move the structure there, but we're actually going to go into uh, turn order here because, at least the way I'm envisioning it, um, this is essentially going to be a timed combat. Now, there's no real specific rules on how this is supposed to work. Um, however, uh, I'm sort of stealing a concept from another game I love running uh, called Star Trek Adventures. And the whole purpose of this is that you have what is essentially a timed skill check going on at the same time as combat. And so, Torvian, you're going to be basically doing tech check after tech check after tech check to represent you continually working on this thing. While everybody and else... Lasts oh, yeah. until I get a certain number of successes. Correct, yes. While everybody That's else covered, keeps you alive. Yeah, I'm looking for the skill challenge thing, whatever it's called. Yeah, it's called the skill challenge. It's in here. Oh, is it actually in there? Oh, yeah. Well. Oh, whatever. Or at least it was in version one. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I mean. I, I remember seeing... Yeah, thank you. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so uh, I wasn't going insane right. then. I am actually using something in the system. It yeah. did okay. exist. Yeah, I'm some, glad. All right, point. so you guys know what I'm talking about then. So... Yeah, um, you're good. 
what's going to happen is I'm going to put on a token for the mob of Frozen coming up. Um, but we are going to treat them like a mob, which is kind of what we did on that yeah. sort of offline conversation. Um, there is a possibility of you guys essentially killing the mob outright, but it's going to require some ingenuity is what I would say. Right. Um, yeah. So let me add, because there's two mobs here. So let me add them well, to the turn yeah. order. It's it's more like we killed the mob till they're manageable. And like that, and the time is no longer the the threat that mm -hmm. that that you're positing right now. Yeah. Uh, right. So that makes perfect sense to me. All right. So you guys should both see mob one and mob two. I got mob one's a big boy. Well, I made it big so we can yeah. see it a little bit easier. I know that, and it, yeah, it makes sense. And it's a giant stream of of WWZ <laughs> zombies. <laughs> All right, so uh, before we start initiative, I do want again want to be fair. Do you guys want to do round robin where you know we kind of go you guys mob, you guys mob, or do you want to actually roll initiative here? I think if we're trying to calculate time, as use time as in a a very you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Intentional way, mm -hmm. then we should roll initiative, since that's. I think that's a fair argument. Yeah, let's uh, let's get um, Are we rolling initiative as for the mob as a single unit? Uh, mob one will have its own initiative, and mob two will have its initiative. Okay, that that was essentially my question. Ah. So let's see. They have pretty shit initiative, if I know correctly. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but we suck at rolling, so. All right. So hit this twice. Uh. Where is initiative on the character sheet? Combat? It's on. It's under the combat tab. It's on under yeah. roles on the le on the right hand side. Those initiative is a base attribute. Amazing. Yes, but if you do the, it doesn't include a wrath die. If you ah, do the combat fair. initiative, is the thing. Not that it particularly matters because you're still rolling, I believe, the same amount of dice. But so the frozen mm -hmm. got a zero and a two, right? Yep. All right. So Cross oh, has a one. Harad has a four. <laughs> Uh, Combat see. section. Jacked it's ahead. in the on the right hand side. I was up at the top. I got a three. Top right. Yeah. Okay. Under rolls. Shank that's recover shock and determination and stuff. So I think the only person I have to roll for is Lily, and I don't have her sheet done in roll twenty, but I have it here handy. She is rolling three d six. Uh, so one. Yeah. All right, sort by descending. So up first is Brother Harad. What would you like to do? All right, so how effective is my makeshift barricade? I would say that we're Why treating it like... There? Let's treat it like hardcover. Why am I not on there? Yeah, Are you not uh, on Mr. Torvian. Oh, well, I don't know how that happened. Probably because... Did you select your token when you did initiative? It should have. Oh, yeah, you are. You're at the bottom. You. You're zero. Yeah, you just put it in. I rolled a two. Oh, you're there. You're just at a zero. Yeah, I zero. added it manually. So let me resort oh. by. Okay, you should be on there now. There we go. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, anyway, Brother Harad, your question. So I'm treating this, if I remember cover rules correctly, um, this is essentially four armor points of cover. And I would say that it is uh, quote unquote difficult terrain or whatever the actual term for it is. Um, this is, it basically costs double movement to get through your obstruction. All right. And what are these down here? Uh, those are drums of fuel. I will throw these drums of fuel also onto the barricade. Okay. Uh, how many do you want to move? Let me ask that question. I assume it'll take all of my turn to move all three of them onto the barricade. Correct. Um, but I'll you... just pile them up. Okay. All right, so I'll draw, let's see. I know we're doing this uh, freehand, but uh, such is the beauty of Roll20 is I could do this very quickly. So yeah, you uh, will use these blue circles as the drums. And you uh, make it even more difficult for the mob to get through. You may also consider poking holes in them so that they're spattering fuel on the frozen and then 
ignite it? I would, but my oh yeah, I could use my power sword on uh, unpowered. Just just poke it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so as you're doing that, uh, Corporal Shank, what are you doing, buddy? I'm gonna run over to Sister Kronz. Okay. Take up the stairs. I'll just move myself over there. It's about six meters, I think. So well within my range. Mm -hmm. uh, am I allowed to? What's the difficulty for hitting a mob uh, for this mob? Area? I believe that it is. It's a mob of frozen, right? Yeah, it's a mob of frozen. It's just a... Why isn't everybody just falling back into Salili's aura of they can't go through that? I mean, if you shout that in character. Yeah. Remember, Salili said that whenever the frozen get close to her, they just kind of shake and stop doing things. Just stay but around I her. I have them in a bottleneck. How confident or you know, how sure are you? There's a reason that those women and children are still alive. Yeah, but some people got torn up. So I believe that while mm -hmm. we have the tactical advantage, we should use it now. I know. So uh, what would the difficulty be? Um, if I read rules correctly, uh, it's going to be a total of three. Yes, three. Oh, three. Uh, can I expend a point of ammunition to reduce that by two? I think it's, uh, I... Hmm. I, I would say that you could do that. Okay, so I'll reduce uh, my ammunition to five and I'll roll the attack with my hot shot last gun. Okay, that was going to be my question, which weapon you were using. Hmm. All right, well, uh, that means you are hitting three targets in the mob. So, what is the damage on your hotshot? Uh, so the damage is uh, I'll draw it. But... Seven, but the AP is what does it. All right. So um, you, you know, kind of shoulder your hotshot las gun and fire into the approaching mob, and you see that three of the frozen immediately drop with holes through their chest. Uh, but they're still coming. There's still quite a number of them coming at you. Oh, I'm going to have to reload next turn, but that's next turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, Jackta, what are you doing, buddy? So uh, I know that you said that there were stacked supplies up here, mm -hmm. um, but I go back to my original question. How large are these? Are these things that somebody could move themselves, or is this something that would require specialized equipment? Um, little column A, little column B. There's definitely smaller crates and smaller furniture that you could move. But as someone pointed out earlier, you're going to need the Space Marine to move some of it. There we go. Um, he is going to, uh, if there is any, uh, anything that looks like it's a fuel container that he can move himself, he is going to try and move that over towards the staircase to basically start shoving it down the stairs. Okay. Uh, let's see. I would say that in the same sort of area that Shank and Krantz are posted up in, uh, you could find, let's say, you know what? I'll roll a d6. You find four such barrels of Prometheum. Uh, what would you like me to, or do you need me to roll anything to try and move these? Uh, let's have you roll an athletics here. Any modifiers? Do your augments give you modifiers on that? Ah, uh, it's built in, so. Hmm. Now I'm going to say just do it straight. Okie dokie. Uh, and hey, look at six. that. You get a point of glory and you can shift if you so choose. Um, could I... Could I shift one in order to speed this process up? Basically, I want to push, push down more than one. Yeah, yeah, I can say that can happen. So, you know, Jackta, you run over, you grab a barrel of Prometheum, and as Krantz and Shank are opening fire, maybe you wait for a lull and you throw one barrel and then a second barrel uh, towards the mob. And what I'm going to say is we're going to treat the barrels of Prometheum like uh, grenades that have yet to go off. So I'll put them as blue circles. And if Krantz, Shank, or Jackta, if you shoot one of the blue s circles, it's still going to be a attack to sh hit them. But if you do hit them, we'll treat them like a grenade. 
Sweet. Awesome. Um, how how do I spend glory to intercede, or can I still do that to change the initiative order? Or, or what um, I believe it is a spend of one or two glory. Let's say one glory. Uh, as I look at the quick reference real quick, because I know you definitely can do that. Um, I say that because I would like to go before the mob uh one goes. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know how much it costs us in glory, but I think we have enough to do it. Yeah, you've got more than enough to do it. Um, so let's I, let's you, say for sake of argument, it's only one glory. It's probably two, but let's just say it's one. It's usually one glory, but that's because it's usually the alternating hero, villain, hero, villain. That All that would do is make it so it's hero, hero, villain, hero, villain. Mm -hmm. that was, I would case, say, I would say you can up. earn one glory and your initiative will go up by one. Because in, in rolling in the rulebook, agents always go before threats. So if you bump your initiative up to the same as a threat, you still go before the threat. Perfect. Then yeah. I will burn that glory that I earned earlier on uh, to do this. That makes perfect sense. All right. Uh, let's resort. And yeah. it is now Sister Kron's turn. Awesome. Let uh, Sister Kron swap with me. Yep. yep. I'll fix uh, it. There we go. Sister Kron's takes aim. Mm -hmm. at uh the closest barrel so the one straight ahead mm -hmm. um i don't think i can really shoot t two but I, the idea here is probably one explode will explode the other does your well you do have a good point there but i was going to ask does your pistol or bolt gun have rapid fire it does have rapid fire but you can rapid always fire do a multi, confers an extra target as well uh rapid fire confers extra damage dice not extra targets right i'm still thinking old line where rapid fire okay no, I'm, I, I got you. You can always do um, multi-target, though. That's true. Um, um, random. Well, we're probably I feel like I have to. It is, yeah, it's it's barrels of Prometheum, right? Mm -hmm. Right, which is so they're why probably I think... going to leave a puddle of fire after one of them explodes. You probably don't need to explode both of them. Right. I mean, the initial point was you probably don't need to multi attack. Well, I'm afraid that once the mob moves past the barrels, they're not going to be super ha like the barrel placement's not going to be super helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I feel like hitting both of the barrels is probably the better play um mm. i don't i don't think it's reasonable for me i don't know like uh i, I my first thought as a player is like oh man if i blow up a, a gas barrel it's going to explode the other barrel like i played gta before right things mm -hmm. explode next <laughs> to each other um but i'm not sure is that is that reasonable or or would i know that i this requires a multi-target because I would do the thing that makes me do both of those things. I know that I know I need to get that other barrel to explode. Right. And I feel like I'm smart enough to right know now, how this explodes. When you explode one, all the ones that are dead are going to be on the far side. If you explode both of them right now, there it's going to be the same radius. So you're going to take out right. the same number of enemies. All right. No problem. Let's just say I have to take aim. I it'd be cool for me to fire yeah, two precision shots say, to blow up these things. The okay. Thing. Let's just do it. That's no no problem. I'm already taking aim to do it. Um, and my combat action. Can I take aim and do multi-target? I believe you can. Let me double multi -target, check. A com it's, a, it's a, just a form of a special combat yeah, action. Yeah, multi-target multi just increases the difficulty. It doesn't use up an additional action. Yeah, okay, good. I just wanted to make sure. Um, awesome. Uh, is that quick reference one? Yeah, should be on quick reference one. Got it. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, does it add... What, what's the difficulty of hitting a barrel? Uh, I would yeah, say no. that I it would be a just like throwing a grenade at a point instead of at a person. Right. So treat it like you would throw a grenade. So it would be a three. Okay. So and um, aiming first... does give you a bonus die here. Right. So it's okay. So I'm getting a net of minus one, or no, the first one's at the plus one, and the second one's at minus two because it's two. No, it, it just adds plus two. It doesn't add two. It increases oh. the difficulty by two. It doesn't. Oh, but not. It doesn't affect my roll. Got Correct, it. Correct. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Perfect. That makes sense. All right. One attack bonus die. Um. Base. Okay. All right. So the first one is a wrath Ooh. critical. Good job. Oh, nice. There. Okay. Um, you don't roll separately. Both attacks. The both headshot. shots apply to the same one, or both. Both the roll applies to both targets. Yeah, it's one roll. Ah, so it's one roll. So the second okay. barrel doesn't explode, well, so that could matter. But the first well, one is a wrath critical here. Huh. Yeah, I will definitely spend it for the additional D3 wounds. Okay. Um. So would yeah, you absolutely. like to fluff it, or would would you like me to fluff it? 
Uh, you can you can fluff it, but like I probably say some sort of like quippy, you know, sister sister saying right as I like just fire like the single shot at that barrel before it explodes. And uh, yeah, let me let me know what what it is. All right, so I'm gonna put it uh, the red one. The red circle is the one that yeah. explodes. So you take careful aim with your bolt gun and you open fire and it strikes the bolt shell strikes the top part of the promethium barrel and it literally rips off the top portion of the barrel and the process of the metal ripping away causes it to spark and that spark is enough that as the barrel tips over and begins leaking both onto the floor and splashing across the bodies of the mob of frozen coming at you uh, the Prometheum ignites, and the shambling corpses uh, literally go up in flames as yeah. you essentially coat uh, oh. this many. You coat a good number of them in so, the Prometheum. Um, yeah, a good many. I haven't rolled damage yet, um, but I will be spending the glory for the critical hit. But actually, can is it too late for me to spend a wrath to re-roll? No, I would say failure. you can certainly do that. Because I would like to hit the other barrel. And I think this is just the ancillary effect of the exploding barrel hitting the other barrel with a reroll, yeah. right? So it's not really me shooting it again. It's um, more than sufficient. Okay. Ah. The six now. Awesome. So now now I roll damage, and then this this gets added to everybody, right? Mm-hmm. Um, cool. So I'm going to roll um, my plus two bonus damage because of rapid fire. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm just going to roll the uh, additional critical hit, hit stuff after the fact, okay? Okay. Uh, so that's damage. Four. 14. Okay. Um, and then a 1d3. Uh, plus one, because I'm spending glory on it for three Remember, extra wounds. Remember, <clears throat> bolt guns are brutal weapons. So oh, yeah, I already did six... it. Yeah. Uh, it should, the modifier one should have already done that. Yep, yep, he did it right. I, I know what you're saying. Uh, All right, so uh, the number of Frozen significantly decreases on uh, side A, as it were. Uh, the good. combined fire of the bolt gun and exploding barrels of Prometheum knocks out a sizable chunk of the oncoming forces, and as their blackened corpses falls, not quite screaming to the ground... Uh, you basically create what is uh, organic cover, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I look to uh, I look I look to our uh, inquisitorial agent Shank, and I say, "There is nothing better. There's nothing more satisfying than than purging a heretic with flame." Couldn't agree more. All right, it's much better when they're tied up. Cool. Thanks for that. Cool. All right. So, Torvian, it's time for a tech check, buddy. I'm actually first going to holler over at Silili. Mm -hmm. Hey, you said that whenever you're standing near them, they quit moving. So mm -hmm. I would like for you to go stand next to our space marine buddy, because if it works, they won't be able to get through his barrier. Space marine, space marine. You mean the big guy, right? Yes, the largest person. Yeah, I can do that. Awesome. It's you. And a tech check. Terrible. So Wait, unfortunately, you still have first... that two wrath. You do have that wrath. All right, rerolling. And it's worse. Wow. No, that is significantly <laughs> better. You gotta jinx yourself. Wow. That is uh shift as much glory, just shift as much as you can for speed. Yes. Yeah, I think I would say that you could shift. Technically, you could shift more than a few. I've only got two. Well, you've got three, technically. Yeah, you have three sixes, but assuming an average DN of five, you could probably only shift two of them. Yeah, you could definitely shift two. <clears throat> I'm shifting the two of those for making it go by faster. Okay. So, uh, like a madman, or at least how I'm envisioning it, like a madman, you are literally taking the magnetic constrictor coils and trying to interface it with the refractor field sort of repulsing effect. 
and you're getting like sparks and sort of slight burn marks on your fingers but it doesn't really hurt or doesn't actually do damage it's just mostly for effect um but as you connect one of the wires to the refractor field you feel the maglev train shudder a little bit and it doesn't rise up off the floor but you definitely have able been able to connect the power in a way that has not blown up the refractor field hey guys it's it, it's starting it's, it's starting to work give me a little bit more time you will have it all right see that in unison yeah so uh mob one is going to go next and uh, you guys are going to hate me for this, but the Frozen aren't maybe as mindless as you think they are. And this is going to be represented by one of the burning members in the front uh, that is getting sort of the splashback or the trickle-down effect of the flaming corpses. Um, they are actually going to hold up a frag grenade and attempt to sprint at Sister Kron's Corporal Shank and Jackta. In uh -oh. sort of a suicide bombing attempt. Oh, shoot. Yeah. So. Now they are charging through flames, right? They are. And it's probably slippery because it's Prometheum. It's difficult a terrain, yeah. It is difficult terrain. Uh, so I am going to say that they are having to move through it. So their movement is only going to be this much. And they really only need to get within a certain range to. Yeah, they don't have to get close. Um, three meters, I think, for a grenade, right? Or yeah, so what I'm thinking... And here, let me actually make this a little bit easier to conceptualize on the map. So we'll say that one of... This guy is still part of the mob, but he's the one that's running forward. So their movement is that in difficult terrain. So I think think if i read this correctly he can get to here Ooh. Big so Boomba. let's check Big ranges yeah i think that's gonna hit both shank and Kranz. yep all right okay. so uh we're gonna treat this like a standard frag grenade and it's not being thrown. It is literally just he is run forward and blowing up in a suicide bomber fashion. Um, but yeah. there is a ability to dodge, if I remember correctly. I believe that's an What's action that? you have to take. Let me... Yeah, I thought it was a... Well, because the, normally the way it works is they have to roll to hit. and Because there isn't like a dodge anymore. Mm -hmm. Because it's all based on whether or not they hit. And you can just make it more difficult for them to hit you, I believe. Yeah, which I think is what dodging did. Let's do oh, it no, this wait. way. I, 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 I stand thing. corrected. I was literally looking at the page right now. Anyone in a blast radius can attempt to dodge the attack as detailed below. Oh, there you go. Uh, I, I was thinking of full defense, not dodge. After the test is made, the area effect weapon explodes, damaging everyone. If you're using precise measurements, multiply the radius number by three, blah, 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 blah. Uh... Where does it say anything about dodging it? Yeah, I'm reading the same thing you are. Oh, dodging area effects. It's, it's way on the other side of the page. Uh, if you're caught in it, you may attempt the full defense combat option, adding any icons role to your resilience instead of your defense. Uh, you can dive for cover, but you might not escape the full explosion of shrapnel. I'm not really sure how that... It doesn't look what like they have a... What page is this on? Uh, page 186. It is near the bottom right. Yep, I see it. Uh, well, because what's weird is, is that even if you do the full defense, it only says that you add the icons to your resilience instead of your defense, but then it goes on with a separate um, sentence saying you can dive for cover, but it doesn't outline what that does. It doesn't outline like if there's a roll to be made or what. Let's do it this way. For this particular attack, I will say that even though Kronz has already moved and Shank, you've moved, um, what I would say is that if you all want to take the full oh. defense action and try to dive for cover, what I would say is that you both will automatically take a complication, but this might be enough for you to avoid the ill effects of this explosion. I think I'll dodge. 
Well, okay. I hit the deck. Um, so here's here's what happens. Um, so we can still do a full defense action. Mm -hmm. um, however, if you activate a full defense action um, after you've gone, you can take it as what's called a reflexive action, um, okay. kind of like your reaction in 5e. Um, if you do that, though, you can't perform movement, movement, combat actions, or simple actions on your next turn. Basically, you skip your turn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In effect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I see it now. I see it now. That's the, that would be the complication. It's a subset of the full defense. Gotcha. Action. That's why I missed it, because that little mm -hmm. paragraph was separate, and I yep. didn't keep reading. So, yep. You okay. got it. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm taking that. I don't want to get blown up by a grenade. That sounds terrible. Yeah, builds a little character. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, you need that sweet I don't need, sister I don't need battle character. scar. Actually, I already, hey, I already got it. I got the power clawed. Remember, I'm, I'm, I'm at two thirds is... of my health. I'm good. I must have missed that. Uh, that think... was from. Yeah, it was from a thousand sun. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't here for that. I was guarding the entrance. Oh. Remember. <laughs> Oh, no, no, I thought that was back in the uh, sanatorium. Sanatorium, yeah, he took a power claw. You're right, I'm getting the... Uh, oh, okay. Sure. That's yeah, right, they like, did have the weird from that claw thing. Yeah. things. Yeah, I got the power claw. All right, um, anyways, I will be. I would be loving to take that full defense action. I'm just thinking if I can move as part of it. Getting mixed messages from the rules. Right, now, you know, that's the rules oh, for Oh, God, you. it's an initiative test. Oh, shoot. I think I think what it's supposed to reflect is that instead of you dodging it, it just increases your resilience to the point where you don't take any damage to like reflect your just getting out of the way. Um yeah, but I only add my uh whatever I get off an initiative test to my defense. Yeah. Plus, well and your your initiative I'm guessing is not very good. Plus one for every icon. Yeah, yeah. it's two. So you could That's potentially get turn. up to you could potentially get five because it's one plus one for every icon. True. I gotta have a little faith, don't I? Mm-hmm. <laughs> gotta be. All right, sorry about that. Yes. All right, so this thing comes running at us. It's like the fucking orc out of Lord of the Rings, you know, with the torch thing. Sure. Uh, right, it's bro. helms deep, right? And uh yeah. So, shake like a loss. Yeah. So uh <laughs> I'm gonna I'm diving out of the way. Um, as the grenade goes off, so I need to test my initiative to give me the extra. Do I? I don't. Can I borrow a glory from a friend? <laughs> you mind pull. if I borrow a glory? Please, for sir, it? may I have another? You, it's a pull right. for everyone to use. I am. I know. I've just been stealing a little bit more than my normal. I normally do. So, okay. Come on. Come on. Come on, dice. Okay. Here we go. There's. Uh, there might be glory on the board that I can't get rid of because I can't see it. Okay. Uh, gotcha. that's not too bad. Um, that's four additional, right? All right. And then, yeah, uh, uh, Shank, are you doing the same? I'll change my mind. I think I'm going to tank this. You're going to tank it. All right. Uh -oh. All right. James so, words. frag so, grenade yeah. is 10 damage plus four ED. So let's roll yep, that four is. ED. All right. All right. So. Yeah, you're a braver man than, than me. Uh, that is actually only oh, wow. 11 damage. Right, uh, I've got a resilience of 9. So I take 2 of those. Um, Very nice. But I will try and roll for shock. Okay. Uh, so how do I do that? Is it determination? I yeah, On this sheet, I believe it's determination. Yes, yeah, determination. Oh. So you actually can soak both. Mm. Okay, so... What I do is I'm just going to close my eyes and just whisper a silent prayer. The Emperor condemns as the explosion washes over me. And sure enough, as you emerge on the other side, uh, Jacta, you see your, maybe friend is a strong word, but you see your friend uh, not really worse for the wear. Uh, he's standing. Walk it off! Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, that is mob one. So, on Slily's turn, she's going to spend her full action uh, running over to join Brother Harad. Which is important because when mob two goes, as they enter into Slily's area of effect, uh, Brother Harad, what you notice is, true to the, her word, they begin to seize up and otherwise begin twitching and falling apart at the seams. Um, they don't 
quite like keel over and die, but they definitely slow their advance. And I'm going to say that I'm going to have to roll their resolve here to see how well they maintain themselves. They don't. So what happens, actually, Brother Harad, is as you're looking around the barrels, uh, maybe only three from Mob 2 are able to continue push forward through this uh, debilitating effect. But that is going to be their entire turn, and it comes back around to you. All right. Uh, I'm going to kick one of the barrels into uh, just like a big chunk of them that includes those three and shoot the barrel after aiming it. All right. Go ahead. <clears throat> you got to let us know that her power is legit. <laughs> uh, later. <laughs> And that. And then that. Definitely hit it. And so it was the DN was three? Yeah. So you, you hit all three actually. Um can I shift one of those for a larger explosion? Uh instead of just more damage? Because I'm shooting the barrel, so I'm not Right, right, right. Yeah, you could shift for a lot more damage. Nice. Yeah. In this case, just being more explosion. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want me to roll damage? Nah, I don't think you need to roll looking at their stats again. So yeah, you just sort of kick a barrel and send it flying into the, the uh, surviving mob members. And as it collides into them and they try to repulse it, you aim your bolt pistol and fire off a shot, barely even you know moving your wrist as the recoil kind of comes up your arm. Um, but the shell flies out of the bolt pistol and impacts the Promethean barrel center mass. And the resulting sort of concussive blast uh, envelops the frozen and takes them out completely. So, yeah, with Salili's help, uh, you have essentially cleared the entire right side. Cool. But on the other side of the penthouse floor, we have Corporal Shank. Is there still another gas tank? Uh, no, both no. of them have exploded. Well, so, uh, you'll have to wait real, for me to throw another one. Oh, real quick, real, what's up? Real quick, um, before my turn ends, I'm going to look to uh, Silly and say, uh, your help would be more, better used over on that side. Okay, I'll just no, run across over the landing pad. Anyway, okay. Shake, what's up? Jackson's got the same initiative as me, so he could throw that barrel. Jack Good. can't do anything because he dodged. No, Jack wasn't part of the no. dodge action. Oh, that's right. Jack has no fear. Yeah, Jack is ready to go. <laughs> Sister Crams is on the floor going, ah! Yeah. I'm still slow motion dodging, technically, <laughs> in time. Yeah, so you can throw the barrel off, shoot it if you want. All right, I will attempt to uh, move some more barrels. You want another athletics? Uh, yeah, let's treat this as a grenade, so you need to roll a DN3 here. And DN3 you There's get, where would you like to put the barrel? Uh, I can't actually see because of the dynamic lighting, so I'm just going to move my token real yeah, quick. Yeah, go ahead and move your idea. token so you can see what's going on. Uh, if I can put it right there, that would be great. Okay, yeah, we can certainly do that. Because I'm assuming these are like extend. Oh, okay. Those are actual barrels too. Gotcha. Yep. So the red barrels uh, are the remaining. The blue ones have yet to be blown up. Could I put it right there then? In sure. the middle? Just so I... Because I actually thought these were part of the mob. Ah, no, no. Those are exploded barrels. And I'll just leave myself there to... All right. So, Shank, uh, you want to shoot the barrel? Oh, Yes. I do want to shoot the barrel. Let's see if I hit it. You, you. See, see, you guys are fine. You you got all your complications out of the way at the beginning of the session. That's what I, that's that what I said. So yeah, Shank, you, uh, you know, as Jacta throws the barrel, you wait until it ends its arc right next to the oncoming mob, and you fire, and your hotshot lasgun uh, hums and spits out a deadly barrage as it impacts the Promethean barrel, and this time, it doesn't so much 
explode as it turns into what is essentially napalm as it coats the area and the oncoming frozen uh, in its wake. And uh, go ahead and roll me damage uh, as if it were a frag grenade here. So 10 mm. plus 4 ED. Don't have a frag grenade on the thing, but I'll just add it quickly. Uh, 10 with ED or... said 4, right? 4 ED, yeah. You're not so frozen anymore. <laughs> Well, that see if it works. It did. So yeah, uh, you are able to take out another sizable chunk as uh, more bodies clog up the hallway. And that is both of your guys' turn. We now go to Sister Kranz. Oh yeah, uh, I recover myself because <laughs> I can't do anything because I did my turn. I can't even move. So Kranz, you pick um, yourself off yeah, the Yeah, I can't even though. interaction attack. Uh, I guess I can't pray. Yeah, I can't can't do anything. Right. <laughs> so yeah, Kratz, you just sort of pick yourself up and go. All right, job yeah. done. <laughs> Does she have like the saving uh, Ryan moment where she's like gets up and everything uh, everything else around is like in slow motion. Yeah, <laughs> shell shock. <laughs> yeah, like, there you go. Ears are ringing. Yeah, for sure. People are burning. Lasers are being fired. It's glorious. All right, so Torvian, you know what to do. Time for a tech check, there, buddy. All right, do you want to re-roll? You have one more Since round. Since you're asking, I'm assuming I should. So this will be my last wrath. Or maybe he just wants you to get rid of it. All right. It, it, it's, it's a definite improvement. So uh, what I would say is if you shift that glory or that six for extra speed, you could complete it so the maglev is ready to go. But you probably don't want to leave without your friends. So it'd be ready, but it wouldn't leave. Correct. Right? Okay. So I can push that. Uh, so I only needed a two in order to succeed. Mm -hmm. And I can push to finish. Correct. Okay. Um, Tell us to get going. <laughs> I'll go ahead and push and holler out, hey guys, Mag, the train's leaving the station. And as you yell that, uh, Mob 1, uh, at this point, the, let me split them into smaller groups, because at this point, really, the only ones that are on your level and able to get to you at this point in time are two remaining Mob members and uh, they're going to try that same frag grenade uh, tactic that he did before. Don't ask me where they got these frag grenades, but they have them all the same. They are also scum. Yep. All right. So uh, this one is going to actually run, if I have distances proper, no, it can get right on top of its dead buddy. So let's check ranges here. I thought oh, no. I think, ironically enough, Kratz, you stand up and then another grenade. <laughs> oh my Which god. Which means I can also reflexively jump again. Uh-huh. So is anybody so uh, anybody full defensing? It's like Dark mm. Souls. I'm just diving every no. <laughs> I'm tanking it again. Tanking now it again. Now here's a question. Does the reflexive only apply to that one attack? I believe so. I'm guessing so. I will not. All right. So, Kratz, go ahead and... Yeah, uh, initiative. I'm not going to... Uh, wow. I accidentally spent the extra glory. That's fine. That's uh, fine. <laughs> I burned an extra glory of our group. I'm sorry. I didn't clear the thing, and I already rolled it. I'd say it's uh, worth so it. committed to it. Yep. Um, so, it looks like I can do a part... It, the rules aren't clear. It looks like I can partially move, which is part of why. I can move mm -hmm. half my speed. Um, that's um, if you're doing it on your turn. Got it. Okay. Um, yeah, so, nope. <laughs> Another explosion, but I have plus three resilience. So I have, like, a 13 res uh, one plus four. Right? So plus um, five. 
five. So uh, I have a 14 resilience. I literally can't take damage from that. Yeah, like I would have to roll all sixes for you to take damage. And I only rolled three. So that's a total of 13 damage. Okay, so I'm going to roll my shock again. Ouchie. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to roll uh, I, shock, well, I don't know why. Y'all, <laughs> you wanted, okay. Well, it's because there's a second one coming, and I was hoping that he was going to roll yeah. low on this one. Yeah, so I take two wounds. If I soak, uh, soak, yeah. soak, soak. Where determination. Is yeah, it's the determination button on this sheet. Is that what it is? Yeah. Woo! Wow. You know what? I may as well. I may as well spend a spend one on my wrath. I haven't spent one yet. Here's my wrath. Mark that off. Okay, three. So, what was it? Thirteen is what 13. you rolled. So I take three. All right. So Kranz, you actually dive again and get out of the way of the the brunt of the explosion. And this time when you look back at your fellows, uh, Shank and Jackta not quite have the comical effect where they've got sort of that uh, charred face and, you know, hair sticking up, but it's pretty close. After I've taken a couple of wounds, I think my face is a bit cut up and... Uh, it's like a, yeah, like Bruce Willis and Die Hard, you know, just the <laughs> tasteful amount of cuts. I was actually thinking more about the Four Sniper and Terminator cuts. too. Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 same, yeah, perfect. I love it. So, action, act, the action hero, cut up. All right. Um, Pause, I'm gonna have my to, skull is showing. I'm gonna have to drag <laughs> your, I'm gonna have to drag your butts out of here. Mm-hmm. Actually, I think it's the other way around. You're on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> we stood up. Well, as you all are debating who's on what floor, uh, Salili is going to look to Harad and go, okay, so am I getting on the train or am I going to help your buddies? Go help them get to the train. I can do that. All right, so she's going to spend her full action moving, which means I believe she can get to there. Which is good for you all because what I would say is on the remaining mob member's turn... Uh, as it begins running forward with the grenade, it gets right to the edge of her aura and stops dead in its track. And that pause is enough to detonate the frag grenade. Yeah. Oh, that's such a good scene. And it completely scene. misses all of you. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, think of it. We just, like, took three in the face, right? And, like, they're like, or this is the third one coming after taking two in the face. And you're like, oh, God. And then all of a sudden it just freezes and stammer. Oh, yeah. And it just explodes in front. Oh, God. That's so and good. And then the camera pans awesome. over to Slowly and she goes, told you. Mm -hmm. But no, I mean, the mobs below are still coming. There are still an innumerable mount of Frozen yeah. coming up. <clears throat> but you all are essentially out of combat and able to get to the train under your own power. Sure. Yeah. We go to we go to game cutscene. I know. Yeah. Brother yeah. Rod, without Ow. knowing if there's reinforcements, he's going to light the Prometheum that's been leaking from the barrels with his power sword before mm -hmm. he runs to the train. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Right. Once we're on the train and moving, I'm going to try to medicate some, of, so, so some health and some shock back, maybe. Yeah. Oh, I'll let you roll for that. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so yeah, right. So we're doing that, like running to the train. They're like, we they see the the frozen's uh, do that sort of like scatter, like you know, like a dog is too excited taking a corner. Like they're like just zombie running, like they can't even get that fast to us. And then you're just you're running it. So we turn around, blast them a little bit. Like we take it on the closest ones, but they're just it's way too many before we jump onto the train. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And right yeah. as the frozen sort of fill the platform, the train uh, shutters and begin moving along the maglev track. And you guys are on a direct route towards the remaining spire, the one of the governor that apparently is causing most of this. That's where we're going to end the session. We'll make a note to do the Medicaid check on your way uh, to the spire during the next session. But that's where we're going to call the session. What did you guys think? Pretty good. It was fun. Awesome. It was great. Cool. Yeah. Good to be back. I I uh, I know we sort of got a little bit mired in the rules there, but again, it's been three weeks since we've played, yeah. and again, we're all relearning the system, so that's perfectly fine. But yeah, uh, any bits of feedback? Anything you guys particularly liked? Anything you didn't like? I think we need a new dice roller. 
<laughs> that I can't help you with. <laughs> you you just need to designate someone other than you rolling. You, you don't need understand. To, I have a, you I have just a need friend. to go find your luck. I have a friend who is extremely lucky with dice rolls, unless he's rolling dice for me. And it's still bad. That's it's, funny. Uh, That's I'm not sure which of the was... chaos gods hates me, but one of them hates me. It's gotta be Zeech. Definitely Zeech. Lost causes. Nuffle doesn't like you. <laughs> Nuffle. <laughs> He's the chaos god of dice rolls. Yeah. <laughs> cool, cool Good stuff. All right, uh, let me end the stream and then we'll do some offline talks. So uh, Twitch, YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, you will hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, see these lovely gentlemen next week. See a stream.